Hey, what is going on, everybody? <laughs> Seven long years on YouTube. I almost forgot that it was today, but I had somebody tag me on Twitter really, really early this morning um telling me congratulations and i was like holy shit it has been seven years hasn't it seven years ago today sausage party start, started a completely different chapter of my life so uh figured i would just hang out for a little while uh, I, unfortunately i've been really sick for almost a week that's why you haven't seen any content i was trying to use this uh planning to use this week to get uh like a couple of john carpenter reviews out of the way get some editing done for next week maybe even some tier list just kind of get ahead of the game and you know fate gave me a big one of those so uh it was like saturday we'll get all the negative shit out of the way first saturday i got home from me and the family took a trip to atlanta and came home and i was just feeling off the entire time and then i laid in bed and i couldn't get warm i was like shivering cold and then i fell asleep finally and then woke up and i was covered in sweat and i was like oh god here we go Sunday didn't feel right. Took a COVID test. It was negative. And then uh, Monday and Tuesday, I didn't feel better at all. Like I just didn't want to get out of bed. My head hurt. My stomach hurt. My body ached. Took another COVID test on Tuesday. Still negative. I'm like, oh, I guess I'm just good old fashioned sick. <laughs> As if that didn't exist anymore. Uh, and then luckily around yesterday afternoon, the sick part of it started to go away. But unfortunately, last Tuesday, when I was doing a shoulder press, somehow I messed something up on this shoulder. So like from the back of my shoulder all the way up to the side of my neck here, I don't know if I pinched a nerve or did something, but I've had this pain to where I couldn't turn my head past this. And if anything put pressure on my head, it hurt. And so I was sick and wanted to lay in bed, but it was painful to lay in bed. I was just like, fuck me. What happened? What did I do? Uh, luckily, that started going away yesterday, too. And then today, the first day that I felt 90%, 90% healthy, my shoulder pain's mostly gone away. I can do this like I used to be able to do. I was looking forward to going back to the gym tomorrow, and I went into the garage to get into the cold plunge, and I bought these things on Amazon. It's like a jigsaw rubber mat to go underneath it to kind of keep the the water out from underneath the the cold plunge and give you a place to stand and dry off and those things apparently were just so fucking cheap i'm gonna leave them a one star review on amazon when i'm when i'm done with this but uh, i went to go step on it and the the jigsaw connection like disengaged and it was like ice it just whew, and then so i went horizontal and smacked my lower back right above my uh right above my tailbone on the concrete floor in the garage and so i have been in a lot of pain down there for most of the day right as i was feeling better so apparently i walked under a fucking ladder in my sleep or something i don't know what's going on but uh i'm gonna i plan to hang out for a couple of hours we'll see earlier when i was editing a video it made it feel worse and so if it starts to get really bad i might have to bail but uh right now it feels pretty good i laid down for about two hours before the stream to kind of relieve whatever pain i was having so now that we've gotten all of this cursed cody bullshit out of the way what is going on guys i see everybody already in here there was a couple of comments before i even started nicholas cage and danny mcbride equals cody leach <laughs> please don't tell my wife i have any nicholas cage in me because she can't stand nicholas cage i don't know why i don't know why but she can't uh the danny mcbride thing is funny because i've heard that uh, thousands of times at this point it must be and i love danny mcbride so i would take it as an absolute compliment that i sound like him but i've tried to like listen to clips of him and listen to clips of me and i just don't hear it it must be true because so many people say it and i'd love for it to be true but i just don't hear it it's the weirdest thing oh man i'll tell you what would be fun before i start diving into the super chats and we uh go crazy with that as we always do let me can I do that? Yeah, I can do this. Hang on. Just for fun, since it's seven years, let's watch my original Sausage Party review together. <laughs> I have not watched this thing in years. So let me... Whoa, 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 sir. I don't think so. Uh, let me uh, let me see if I can do this. So hang on. Um, share screen, Sausage Party, share tab audio share 
All right, let's watch this together. Let me uh, let me put these on. Let's see how insufferable I am. <laughs> oh, it's so bad when anything and you get better at it. And then you look back at some of the old shit and you're just like, ugh. So let's see. Let's see how uh, how everything started back in the day. I'll turn the volume down a little bit. Fuck intro. <laughs> I just want to be comments but like, thank you for the aneurysm. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so Sausage Party is a new no star animated movie directed by Greg Tiernan. It has the voice acting of Seth Rogen, Kristen Wiig, Jonah oh, Hill, Air James Franco, Danny McBride. Basically, the whole Seth Rogen crew is here. And Edward Norton. So the basic premise of this movie is that it's told through the eyes of food in a supermarket. And you have hot dogs, hot dog buns, my old living room. tequila bottles, have all honey mustard Uncle jars, Pop, the whole game. And the way Marvel that they view their world is that they're waiting in the supermarket. Way up on this side, you can't see. The great beyond, as they call it. And the chauffeurs to this great beyond is humans. So when they come into the store to buy this food, the food views it as them going to heaven. As we all know, that's not quite how it works out for them. You know, when I first heard about this movie, I thought it sounded like absolute trash. But then that first trailer had me on the floor dying. I'm a big fan of Seth Rogen. I like a lot of his humor and a lot of the humor for a lot of the guys that show up in this movie to do voice acting. This, review now, this was a really great setup for four minutes, a rated 18 R seconds. I probably movie. shot it's it. One of those premises that's so ridiculous minutes. that it just might work. Does it actually work on screen? Kind of. <laughs> to me, the first 15 minutes of this movie was absolutely hilarious. And it really picked up in the last half hour to give some of the biggest laughs I've had all year. But there's a really big lull in the middle of this movie that's mostly just driving the plot forward, showing what should be funny but isn't quite funny by the time you get there because the main problem with this movie is that they hang a lot of the humor on this movie on whether or not you think it's going to be funny to see animated food cussing their asses off and god do they cuss their ass off this movie is rated r as fuck sausage party rated r as, as fuck, fuck. <laughs> unfortunately that beats the joke into the ground by about the half hour mark it's hilarious when you that's, first that's see the humor it, was sharp even back then you get about 20 30 minutes into the movie it really gets old you're like okay you're kind of numb to it by now there's a lot of different elements to this movie there's parts of a musical there's a lot of plot points derived from toy story there's parts of a war movie there's parts of a horror movie a lot of different things going on in sausage party the trailer to this movie is actually a little bit misleading i'll tell you something to look out for in a lot of my earlier model. videos i'll pause this really quick uh, because I didn't know how to, I didn't know what the editing process was going to be like. So you'll see me looking into the camera. And as I finish my thought, I'll like look away because I have probably like a bullet point of notes because I used to take notes. And so probably for the first uh, three or four months of my channel, you'll see videos where I'll, I'll finish my thought while I'm looking away. And when it comes down to uh, videos that I make today, that I need notes for, like if I'm doing a ranking of a lot of different movies and I want to remember specific things, uh, I might do a few bullet point notes. I still catch myself doing that in the editing stage sometimes and it infuriates me where uh, I'm in such a rush to get to the next one that I'll start shifting my head down towards my notes before I'm done speaking. I don't give that like half a second looking into the camera without saying anything so that I can cut cleanly. You'll see that a lot in my early videos, I bet. The floor dying with laughter from start to finish. And that's really not how the movie is. There's a lot of satire thrown in. There's a lot of social commentary thrown in that I wasn't expecting. And some of it worked. The majority of it really didn't for me. You know, this is a movie where commentating on race relations and sexual orientations and political views and everything like that kind of slows down the momentum when you're trying to go to a movie to escape from all that. Speaking mm, of social things haven't changed much, if you're have easily they? offended, do not go see this movie. I think when they were writing the plot, they figured, you know what? We're probably going to offend one or two people, so let's just offend everyone. Yes. Like I said, the commentary in this movie leads to do. a few really good jokes, but a lot of it to me was just really out of place. Something else there that was it is out again. of place in this movie <laughs> to me was all the drug jokes. You know, it really didn't do anything new that we haven't seen in all the other Seth Rogen, James Franco, Jonah Hill movies before. They don't really do anything new with it. Now it's just a food item smoking a joint. To me, it was really thrown in there just because I feel like whenever Seth Rogen's in a movie, they got to throw in a drug joke, like it's in his contract or something. The other thing that really didn't work for me <laughs> was this fucking guy. Anytime he it was took on me screen, so fucking long to figure out how to get that None picture of of laid in front of me. Voice acting was really annoying. 
it wasn't for me. Guys, Sausage Party has a lot of great laughs. It's not a great movie. It's by no means perfect, but some of these laughs in this movie is some of the hardest that I've laughed in 2016. As a lot of you have already heard, yes, there's a scene at the end of this movie that is fucking gut-busting. The final scene in this movie is almost worth the price of admission alone. It, it is. went so far over the top, I couldn't believe what I was seeing on screen. In the end, that really comes down to whether or not you're a fan of Seth Rogen's movies or not. If you're not a fan of Seth Rogen, why are you even watching this review? If you are a fan of Seth Rogen, go ahead and give Sausage Party a shot. So for Sausage Party, I'm going to tell everybody to see it on Netflix. So what did you guys think of Sausage Party? Go ahead yes, and comment I, below I used to um, like and subscribe. I used to close it out with uh, my my reviews, um, my original like rating system I had when it said see it on Netflix. And to me, that it became what is now stream it. And uh, the reason back then Netflix was still kind of streaming. That was it. It was that, you know, Amazon Prime was there, but nobody really cared about it. Uh, Hulu was there, but wasn't really a big thing. That was just another way to watch TV and cut the cable. But Netflix, we didn't have Max and Peacock and paramount plus and all that seven years ago and so see it on netflix to me was common sense and i got so many comments saying this movie isn't even on netflix you're a liar and i, I was like what the fuck is this a sign of things to come of commenting on the internet just no thought process whatsoever unfortunately it was but uh, yeah so eventually i changed it from see it on netflix just to stream it and to get rid of those kinds of comments but uh yeah i used to have um it was skip it, see it on Netflix, see it in theaters, and go out and buy it. And uh, I also got rid of see it in theaters because I started getting comments of um, I could never apply that to older movies that were out of the theaters. And if I did put that in a review, I would get comments later on after it's out of theaters saying it's not even in theaters anymore. What are you talking about? <laughs> so I was just like, okay, fuck it, bye. Skip it, stream it, go out and buy it. And then the Rob Zombies 31 review which was eh, six months or so into my, well, no, no, it was like October, November. So about three or four months into my channel, I saw that movie and that birthed the fuck this movie rating. And it's been a mainstay ever since. <laughs> that was wild, watching some of that old stuff. It's only four minutes and 18 seconds, but my flow and my editing is just not there whatsoever like it is today. So even for me, I'm watching four minutes and it felt like 20. Oh, Lord, that was good. All right, let's move over to some of these super chats. Uh, well, it looks like maybe some of them didn't get starred. So hang on. I'll, I'll move on to the starred ones after this. So we got Ian McGrath. Cody, have there been any films you have changed your mind about either in a good or bad way since the channel started? Um, not since the channel started. My go-to answer to that question is the Evil Dead reboot uh, 2013. Was it 2013? Uh, the Fide Alvarez one. I, I've always been a casual Evil Dead fan. But uh, I went to go see that movie because the trailer looked awesome and it was advertised and all that typical PR bullshit where it's like scariest movie you've ever seen. People are passing out in the hallways and people are leaving this movie. And I was like, holy shit, this is going to be crazy. And I go to see it and I was like, that wasn't scary at all. Fuck off. And I just didn't like the movie when I first saw it in theaters. And it was probably two or three years later. I bought it on Blu-ray because it was cheap and I watched it again. And like halfway through it, I was like, what the fuck was wrong with me? This is awesome. And I think I just watched it with the wrong intention. Yeah, you don't really watch Evil Dead to get scared. Although I'm sure there are some people that would think that movie is very scary, but it's uh, it's what I would call splat stick, to where uh, in a much more brutal and visceral way, it's similar to the first couple Evil Dead films, where it's just trying to kind of shock you with the amount of violence and gore, and the practical effects and everything, and that metal as fuck third act with Mia and the chainsaw and the raining blood and everything. So yeah, that. That turned into a movie that I would have said I didn't like at all walking out of theaters to now one of my favorite horror films of all time. A movie that I've changed my mind about the other way, like a movie that I liked and then I rewatched and said this is not good. Um, maybe the original Friday the 13th. That's a movie I go, I've been back and forth on a couple of times. I never thought any of the Friday the 13th movies were very good for a long time. When I reviewed them and I started kind of going through the franchise and looking up the history and interacting with the fan base, I started to kind of see their charm. And there's some of them that I do genuinely enjoy. I still, as, as a whole, the franchise is not very good in my mind. But I remember when I reviewed these movies, back in the day, I used to really try to account for like the legacy and how iconic things are and the, how big of a fan base it has. And so I think I gave the original Friday the 13th a four out of five when I reviewed it. 
no, <laughs> no. And so when I watched it for the 33 on 31 is the first time I'd watched it in years. I put it on and I was just like, this thing fucking sucks. Like there's a couple of things about it that are, are awesome. Pamela Voorhees is awesome. There's a couple of great kills. Tom Savini's the man. Um, Kevin Bacon being in there is cool. But overall, that movie is not good. I'll put it that way just to be nice. And so that's one where I, I like I never thought it was very good. And then when I tried to be a like look through the critics eye about it, I was like, oh, you know, it's got a legacy. It's got some things going for it. Four out of five. Fuck it. And then when I watched it again years later, after getting a lot more experienced and pulling my head out of my ass a little bit and hopefully understanding what I'm here to do a little bit better, aside from just, yeah, guys, I agree. It's iconic. Everybody knows Friday the 13th. Um, I watched it again and I was just like, I really don't enjoy this at all. So maybe that kind of satisfies your answer. But yeah, that's a movie I've always kind of been back and forth on. Uh, Robert Parks. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it very much. It doesn't show me the super sticker. I wish it did. Now they'll change that sometime. Hey, I wanted to make sure to say congratulations, Cody, on your seven year anniversary. Here's to the next seven plus years. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's going to be uh, I ain't stopping this train anytime soon. If it was going to stop, it would have been in these first two years of being full time. So we're we're going strong and I'm I'm happy for that. And you guys are a big reason why. So I appreciate it as always. Uh, Alex, happy anniversary. Hope this helps. Say hey, every little bit helps. Even just watching and clicking the like button and sharing helps more than you guys realize. Uh, Sean Sheridan, congrats, Cody, on seven years. Question, do you think Seth Rogen is a one-note actor? I don't think he is great. He plays Angry Stoner every movie I've seen. Uh, no, no. I mean, he definitely has his strengths as an actor. But I think he's got a bit of variety going on. Like, if you look at something like... Um, uh what the fuck is it called long shot i think that that stretched his boundaries a little bit him doing a romantic comedy i thought he was really good in that uh you see him do some dramatic work like steve jobs and uh i feel like there's another one that i'm thinking of but he does really good with that as well so i think he does have some range i would not call him one note he's limited um but that guy is immensely talented just in general because of his writing credits, his producer credits, like everything he does outside of acting. So, you know, he, he's said and done some things that have kind of turned me off a little bit as a fan here and there. He's a very, very outspoken individual on Twitter. And, uh, you know, as am I sometimes. And, and I've certainly had people tell me that my Twitter have turned them off of me and that's fine. But um, he He's somebody that regardless of whether or not I agree with a lot of the things that he says, I still respect the living hell out of him and I still enjoy a lot of his work uh, and his name being on there usually to me gives it some legitimacy as far as like this is probably going to be pretty good. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't quite agree with that. Hey, Blake, what's going on, buddy? Happy seven years. Thank you, sir. I was just talking to Blake yesterday. You got to saw the, um, the Lost Voyage of Demeter and can't remember if blake has seen cobweb or not i think i told him to go check out cobweb um i have i talk about movies so much sometimes i forget who i talked about them with but if you haven't seen it yet blake check it out happy seven years cody keep rocking dude thank you congratulations on seven years on youtube from tom quick question which film do you think is more influential and important to the horror genre halloween or texas chainsaw massacre i would say halloween uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is certainly important and influential, but I think there's more movies that took their cues from Halloween than movies that took their cues from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And Halloween as a franchise has continued to be influential and important. I mean, whether or not I think the movie's great or not, Halloween 2018 was very instrumental in bringing us back into this slasher resurgence that we've been in for the past four or five years. So I would say hands down that goes to Halloween. And, you know, I've been playing uh, the Texas Chainsaw game, and I will be streaming again here soon now that I've, I'm not under the weather anymore. I didn't want to be on camera like, what's up, guys? Uh, but uh, I've been enjoying the hell out of that game significantly more than I thought I was going to. I usually don't like those multiplayer games, but for whatever reason, that one really works for me. And it's kind of given me a bit of a, a, a an itch, if you will, to watch the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre again. Because not anywhere near the original Friday the 13th, but uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is also one of those original classics that I, I've never really been that enamored with. So uh, I, I look forward to checking that one out again here soon, seeing how my thoughts may have changed or not changed. We'll see. Ethan Holgate, now you have to watch your Uncharted movie rant. <laughs> I'll probably get demonetized. My old rants were rough. Uh, but yeah, that was a wild video because it, it took so fucking long for them to get that Uncharted movie made that it, it was 
a years old video and people would still be clicking on it back in like 2021 clicking on it uh looking for news on tom holland uncharted and they would see me just ranting and bitching from four years prior and i kept getting comments on that video for years that was a weird one love the channel man i know how busy you are but any update on the patreon monthly live hangouts um yes uh I was trying that's another thing that I was trying to instrument uh, instrument implement uh during the last couple of weeks um of the month and so I will try I'll, I'll give an update very soon I'll give an update very soon probably during the last week of the month because I'm trying to do uh Patreon exclusive live streams every single Wednesday or Thursday it's been kind of spotty here and there I still owe them this week's uh which you know again me being sick kind of put that in the back burner probably do that tomorrow um, and then I want to try to do a live hangout with some of the top tiers where we just kind of BS like this, um, privately, obviously. So keep an eye out on the Patreon page. Uh, this weekend, I'll probably have a, a solid update for that. Thank you, Thomas. Happy seven years, Cody. Funny story. My stepmom rented sausage party for my seven year old sister. because She thought it was a kid's movie. Woo. That was a fun birthday party. Wasn't it? Oh, shit. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I would need to look at the Blu-ray box to see if how if they make it clear anywhere on the packaging that this is not for children, <laughs> because it does look like a cartoon. Um, but yeah, that ooh ooh, <laughs> that that's a TikTok that I want to see. If somebody putting the, the the thing on and seeing the kids' reaction. Hey Amanda, how you doing? Happy seven year. Glad all your hard work is starting to pay off. Potty mouth then, potty mouth now. Yeah, I've gotten better. I've gotten better. Although there is still some people that comment on my old stuff. They're like, why don't you make this these swear counters anymore? And it's just like, I, I can't. I look at that stuff and I cringe as an adult. Um, and not, not like I was an adult when I was 26, but uh, as a more mature adult, as, as a father, I look at that stuff and I'm like, oh, dude, what were you doing? I, for some reason, I thought that that was funny. That was my claim to fame. My first year or so on my channel is like, I'm just going to swear more than anybody on YouTube about this movie. And <laughs> some people loved it, but. Yeah, I look at it now like that. That would be one that would be you'd see me wincing if we uh, if we reacted to it. Love your videos. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much. I shall. I shall. Uh, Rabbit ears blog. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Appreciate it. To die for lucky bitch to get that name. Uh, happy seven years. You've turned me on to some films over the years. I don't know if you've answered this before, but what is your current workout routine? What is your favorite, least favorite workout to do? Congrats again. Uh, yeah. So for anybody that doesn't know, I put out a video a couple of weeks ago, uh, talking about like kind of my, my health progress, my fitness progress over the, this year, basically since like February and, uh, talked about cold plunging, which is something that I've been doing for over a month now and, and absolutely love it. There's like this thing I wish I would have been doing it for years um and but i didn't really get into workout routines and everything because I, I wasn't confident th that the video was actually going to be received well and i was pleasantly surprised because it got quite a lot of views and overwhelmingly positive feedback i still had a couple dickheads that i had to, to mute because they were trying to be a smart ass but um but i was i was pleasantly surprised I, I was actually very happy when i posted that video how how well the response was so in, in hindsight i wish i would have made it a little longer and gone over some fitness stuff too and maybe i'll do it in the future but yeah my fitness routine right now now i am not somebody to take fitness advice from because i, I just kind of am doing my own thing i'm not like working with a personal trainer or anything like that i'm not educated on the topic but i used to work out very heavily back in my early 20s and uh, I just kind of been doing this year kind of a, a, a variation of what I used to do here and there. So I go to the gym six days a week. I either take off Thursday or I take off Sunday. It's a three day rotation that I repeat once every week. So first day of the week, we'll say Monday because that's kind of the first day of the week in my mind. So Monday, I'll do chest and back. I'll do four exercises each. I'll do a uh, I use dumbbells um uh, right now i'm doing i'm using 70 pound dumbbells i'll do flat bench six to eight reps three sets i'll do incline bench i'll do um a decline bench and i'll also do flies which is a machine where you grab it here and you kind of do this um and in between all of those i do chest back chest back chest back so back i'll do 
wide grip pull-ups, close grip pull-ups, rows, and then reverse flies, which is where you hold the handles and you push it outwards. Uh, and right now I'm doing heavy weight. So I try to do six to eight reps, three sets each. So that's what I do the first day. Second day I do shoulders and arms. So I'll start with um, like a shoulder press with dumbbells. I'm using like 45s and this is what I injured myself with. So be careful when you're using heavier dumbbells. And I don't, I don't know, is it called skull crushers where you take the dumbbells here and you, you touch them up top, don't clang them together, but you touch them up top. I do the same thing, six to eight reps, three sets. Uh, I also do, I do the cable fly machine where I do lateral raises going in front of my body and then I'll do uh, side raises. And in between all of that, I'll do a, um, I'll do curls and I'll use like the little rope cables and pull down for triceps. Third day is legs and core. My least favorite day. I don't care what anybody says. Legs is genetic. You either got them or you don't. And it fucking sucks because I beat the piss out of my legs. Back when I used to work out heavily and this year, I beat the piss out of my legs. I worked them out just as much, if not harder than I work out all of my upper body. And these bitches don't grow. <laughs> I look similar to that photo, the, the the don't skip leg day photo, because I've always had kind of a thinner frame. And genetically, my family has always had kind of skinnier legs, like not quite chicken legs, but bordering on that, unfortunately. And you see some people, man, where they don't even work out their legs and their calves are like fucking arms. It's like, what the hell do you do, man? So I, I just use all different leg machines on that. I'll do some some um, stepping squats. There's probably a more proper name for it where you take dumbbells and then you walk and squat with one leg and then you walk and squat with the next leg. And core is just getting on the machine and lifting your legs up and doing stuff like that. So that's kind of one way I'll do it. Eventually, I'll swap it up. I'll do chest, shoulders, um, tries, back, buys, and switch it up a little bit. Just like a diet, your body will get used to a workout. And you'll start to where you don't get as much out of it. So you kind of have to switch it up and trick your body. Uh, muscle confusion is what they call it. So sorry for anybody that don't give a fuck about fitness. That was a long answer, but I don't talk about fitness very often. So it was like a little breath of fresh air to talk about that for a minute. But thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Brandon, congrats to seven years. Cody been watching since 2019. Are you excited for Superman Legacy? And how do you think Gunn will approach the character? Uh, I'm cautiously optimistic. I love Henry Cavill. Uh, I've said numerous times before, I've never been a Superman fan until Man of Steel. Uh, so everybody that does not like Man of Steel wants to get back to the more lighthearted, Christopher Reeve era, hopeful, colorful uh, version of Superman. And I've never been a fan of that. Even when I was a kid, I just never liked it. So I worry about it going too far that direction for my taste. James Gunn is somebody that I trust wholeheartedly, though. He's proven himself numerous times. Uh, I think he has the passion for it. I think clearly he has the passion for Superman above all else because that's the one thing where they were like, nope, Henry, right away, we got to announce that we're not doing it with you. I'm announcing we're going to start the universe with this. I'm going to write it. I'm going to direct it. We're going to kick the universe off with my Superman film. That gives me hope that he has so much passion that he's going to make sure it's awesome. But there's always the possibility that it won't be. And God help them if it's not, <laughs> because if they go through all this and uh, reboot and most people don't like their movie, ooh, it's going to be a dark day. It's going to be a dark day at WB. Cody, idea for 31 on 31, Stephen King adaptations. Yeah. The, the hard part about that, just from a YouTube marketing standpoint, is that whenever you're doing a ranking based off of one franchise or one director or one topic like Stephen King, it is much more advantageous to just title that movie ranking 31 Stephen King movies than it is to rank it or to title it 31 on 31. Like 31 on 31 is something that's kind of exclusive to our little group and our, our community. Everybody knows what it is, uh, but it's that's why we always do different franchises and even with vampires and werewolves it's it's you know widespread uh you, you would you wouldn't be able to really act uh, effectively title a video ranking 31 vampire and werewolf movies because then everybody would be like which ones and uh, why did you stop at 31 so that's uh that's where it gets tricky when you have such a a small scale topic like that as much fun as that would be um, that, you know, we've had suggestions like, Hey, this director's got 31 movies after they do this next one. Why don't you do a 31 on 31, this director? And I'm like, well, then you should just title it 
ranking this director movies because that's going to get people that are actually looking for that topic. So that's where it gets tricky. That's where the the YouTube algorithm and everything kind of stunts creativity once in a while. But thank you for the idea. Dylan Rutson. Hey, Cody, I've been a fan of the channel and you for a very uh, for a few years now. I think it's awesome how far you've come. How did you like playing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre with CP? Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Uh, I enjoyed it. I've played with them a couple of times since uh, that that live stream that we did. Uh, I've been playing it a lot solo as well. I typically don't like multiplayer games in general, and I especially don't really typically like the asymmetrical ones that we've gotten so far that are mostly all the horror franchises. So Dead by Daylight is kind of the big one. Uh, Friday the 13th was the first one that I played. Uh, you had Evil Dead the game. I didn't like it all. Typically, I get bored with them very quick. And under normal circumstances, I should have gotten bored with this because it's one concept. You're either on the good team or the bad team. There's three maps. The only thing that changes is the time of day. And it's the same thing. Rinse and repeat over and over and over and over and over again. And typically, that will wear me thin within two hours tops. But for whatever reason, the way that they've gotten a nice little variety of things to do and roles to play in this one has kept me interested to where there's five different characters for the killers. All of them have their own play style, their own advantages and disadvantages, and I've kind of had fun experimenting with them. Same with the victims. There's either five or six of them, advantages, disadvantages, skill trees. There's different ways. There's like three or four different ways to get out of every level if you're a victim and three or four different exits to cover if you're a killer. There's multiple things to do while the round is going on, even if you can't see anybody and you're not actively hunting down a victim, like feeding grandpa and locking gates and closing barricades and uh, things like that. So there's so much within the small scale concept that I've actually gotten a lot of mileage out of it so far. And I don't know how long I'll be interested in it. You know, there might be a couple of weeks and then I'll be like, yeah, I'm done if they don't support it with DLC. But um, I've been shocked, genuinely shocked how much I like the game because I, if I was to bet money, I would have put all my money on me not liking the game. Ugh. So yeah, if you uh, if you have an Xbox especially, it's on Game Pass. Check it out. Miss Bont, I know you were never a wrestling fan, but have you ever watched Chucky's cameo on WCW Nitro? Similarly, I know you aren't much of a rap fan, but have you ever seen the Are You Ready for Freddy video by the Fat Boys? No and no. <laughs> um, yeah, I've, I've, wrestling seemed like it was huge uh, to where I wanted to take an interest when I was in like maybe fourth, fifth grade. That's when Stone Cold and The Rock and the Hardy Brothers and uh, a lot of those big names back then were kind of starting to become these huge pop culture icons. And so um, Stone Cold and The Rock especially kept drawing me and making me wanting to watch wrestling, but I just never did never really got into it i like playing the playstation games like uh smackdown shut your mouth was probably my favorite one i constantly played that one with my friends and my brother um but that's as far as it went so no i never saw chucky's cameo and then rap yeah I, i'm not a rap fan whatsoever i can dig some of the stuff from like uh the 90s like the older school stuff like tupac biggie that era i like some of that uh, i feel like there's a little bit more artistry on display back then speaking out of ignorance because i haven't listened to everything nowadays it's very different. It doesn't seem quite as quite as poetic, I guess, as darkly poetic as some of that older stuff is. Uh, it seems more about the beats and the bells and the whistles and not all of them, obviously, but most of the stuff that I hear nowadays is just like, oh, like my son likes rap. And when he's in the shower, he blares the shit on his cell phone. And I just sit here like someone's shoving a corkscrew in my ass. I'm like, oh, God, just fucking wash your ass and get out. Oh. <sighs> He does like rock too, though. So I'm starting to, I'm trying to balance it <laughs> for my own sake. Florida Jit, are you reviewing Chucky season three, maybe in YouTube shorts? It depends. It's going to depend almost entirely on that first episode. Because I love talking about Chucky. I love talking about the TV series. There's a, there's a good and a bad that comes along with reviewing a TV series week to week, especially a show like that. Uh, the good side of it is that you get to express your thoughts on it as the season goes on. The bad side of it is that you don't have the whole picture in front of you. So sometimes things that aren't working for you in episode one might work for you in episode six because it was leading up to something that you didn't see coming. And uh, especially with the way the comment section goes, that can come back to just make covering the episodes a little bit miserable. Um, but 
the reason why I wasn't sure, because I said by the the tail end or at the very end of season two that I might not cover season three was because season two was not fun at all to cover because basically every single episode I wasn't a big fan of. Uh, and if I did like it, I was kind of just being gentle on it. I was like, well, this wasn't as bad as the last three. So it was like eight or not. Was it eight or ten episodes? It was either eight or ten weeks of every week just fuck i gotta get on here and talk about how much i don't like this this is it's just one note being negative about something that i love uh and so that was just rough to go through and rough just to watch the season in general because i just didn't like the vast majority of what they were doing and so when i got to the end of it uh you know it didn't help that it got so it got to the point where even uh, a member of the cast Devin sawa made a remark to me where i'm just like okay so now i can't even be honest without the cast some of the cast being negative towards me like i'm not entitled to my opinion so then i kind of got even more guarded i was just like is it even worth it (laughs) is it even worth the ad sense and 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 everything that comes along with having eight to ten episodes on a season versus one i'm not sure and so i said i wasn't sure and it's going to depend on the first episode because the only thing that i have and i haven't even watched the teaser uh is him doing like a state of the union address which makes and it's supposedly they announced that it's going to be in washington dc and that makes me fearful that they're going to go ultra political and that almost appeals to me less than all the wild wacky shit they did in season two so it's going to depend on that first episode if i watch it and I enjoy it, then I'm surprised by it, or I'm intrigued by it, then I might be inclined to turn the camera on, and I might be inclined to turn it on every week. But if I get into episode one, and I'm just like, fucking Christ, then I might just wait till all eight or ten go and just give my thoughts on the season, because I just don't, I don't get joy out of reviewing something negatively. I especially don't get joy out of reviewing it eight to ten weeks in a row. Um... And so it's just going to be better for me (laughs) to just talk about it once if it goes the bad route. But I'm crossing my fingers and my toes that it won't. Thoughts on the original Carrie? You know, I haven't seen it in a very long time, but that's another one of those classic movies that I've never been all that enamored with. Um, I like it. I don't necessarily have any solid grievances against it, but it's one that I watched as a kid, never really was all that compelled to watch it over and over again. So uh, back in the day, the coolest thing to me was a young John Travolta in it. I was like, oh, shit, look at that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's good. You know, Brian De Palma is a, a great director and it's definitely got some some creepy stuff in it, but um, never been one of my favorites. Let's put it that way. Hey, Cody, have you seen The Den of Thieves or No Country for Old Men? I've seen them both. I believe you would enjoy these if you have not seen them. Uh, no Country for Old Men is incredible save for the way that they decided to end the movie they stuck 100 percent true to the way that the book ends and the way that the book ends does not suit live action does not suit the movie making medium there are cohen brothers whores that will argue that and that's fine if the ending works for you and the narrative stance in a live action movie then feel free to explain to me why i get thematically what the ending is going for and i get how it's trying to go against the grain of what story how stories typically wrap themselves up but there is something to be said of why rules if you will are in place for how you tell stories with movies and the way they decided to wrap that movie up with the fate of the main character is uh it's enough to where if somebody told me that that infuriated them so much they never wanted to watch the movie again i'd be like i get it (laughs) i get it Everything up to that point is the best Coen Brothers movie to me and one of the best crime thrillers ever. But uh, yeah, No Country for Old Men is... I've forgiven the third act, the way that they wrap everything up, the climax, so I can watch it and not get frustrated with it and I can just appreciate it for what it is, but they should have adapted that for the big screen and and changed things because, you know, the the, the sacred scroll of the original novel is, is... it works in novel form. If it does work, I never actually read it. Doesn't work for a movie, in my opinion. Uh, Den of Thieves, I liked. I That was a little overhyped for me. I thought it was good. Uh, I especially liked... Um, shit, what's his name? Um, Ice Cube's son. I can't remember his name. Uh, but he was really good in Straight Outta Compton. But you were wondering, as uh, I was wondering just like everybody else, like, is he actually going to be a good actor or is he just good at imitating his dad? 
And I think he's a damn solid actor. He was funny in Long Shot too, but he was really good in that. And I love Gerard Butler. You know, Gerard Butler is one of those guys that's keeping the old school action movie action thriller alive. And I love that. If the first Halloween didn't have any sequel, would Michael Myers be the big three horror icon? No. He would be listed among people's favorites, but um, the reason why Jason, Freddie, and Michael are the top dogs is because their franchise just kept staying relevant, whether the movies were good or not, kept staying in pop culture awareness for so long while the 80s and the 90s and all this, the slasher crazes happened. So no, if Halloween was a one and done, it would be like um, like when we talk about Black Christmas or something like that, where it's just like, man, that one movie was incredible. If, if, if there was potential there. They could have done more, but you know, it's it's great by itself. And you know, it, it's it's weird to try to think of what the conversation around Halloween would be if they never followed it up. But yeah, I don't think he would be Mount Rushmore worthy with that one movie. What's my worst hot take? Predators 2010 is a great movie with a stellar cast, or the best Terminator final fight is the factory in salvation um i would say the terminator one because i can understand somebody liking the weirdness of predators um oh wait no predators or the predator predators is awesome so no that's not a hot take at all i, I was thinking the predator so no i don't think saying that predators 2010 is a great movie with a stellar cast is a hot take at all i think that's actually a pretty cold take <laughs> so by default doesn't matter what my rationale was it's going to be the terminator final fight but when you got the final fight of Terminator 2, especially in the running. No, that that's that's a scorching hot take, my friend. Saw your Phantasm reviews and decided to watch the first one and absolutely hated it. <laughs> but that is why your channel is my fave, because even when I don't agree, I get your point. Happy seventh anniversary. Try the second one. Do me that favor and watch the second one. That's what I always tell everybody. Just watch the first two Phantasm movies. If you're still not into it after Phantasm 2, then fair enough, Phantasm's not for you. But there are more people on this planet that don't necessarily care for Phantasm but really like Phantasm 2 than there are people that don't like either one of them. So, yeah, Phantasm, look, I grew up with it, so that might have a lot to do with it. If I if it was something to where I was on YouTube and somebody recommended Phantasm, then I might have a lot of the same grievances that everybody else has. But uh, there's a lot of built-in nostalgia. I've always loved the tall man. He's always been on my horror Mount Rushmore, uh, hence his placement in my horror icon tier list. But um, that's a weird movie. It's a weird movie with some very bizarre storytelling and storytelling structure. And so it's not for everyone. And it's from the 70s, too, and it's low budget. So I'm sure it's probably dated in a lot of ways. So, yeah, that's that's a movie that... I would never fault anybody for not liking, but my response will always be, did you watch two? Because two is much more wide appeal than the first one. Miss Mont, I know reviews outside of the channel's main focus get mixed results. For every Barbie, there is going to be an air in terms of views, but branching out is how general audiences are going to discover the awesomeness that is Cody Leach. Keep it up. Yeah, and, and you know, I that's why this year especially, I've really pushed myself to try to review as much as possible whether I think it fits the channel or not. Now, there are some movies that I've just made the executive decision of that's not even worth my time because I know it's not going to do well. And I don't care that much to talk about it. There's been a few. Those are the ones that more times than not are the extras whenever I do like my monthly wrap up that you are hearing me talk about it for the first time. But yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can't always predict what video is going to succeed and what video is not going to succeed. And to go even further with that, I would never want to manage my channel or run my channel or create content just for views there's plenty of times where i do a video that i probably um or i'm not that confident it's going to get views but it's something i want to do or something i want to talk about or something i want to mess around with and so i do it for me so yeah you'll have you'll have some videos out there that won't perform well and that's just the way that it goes Shelby, love the channel. I'm a huge horror nerd myself, and a lot of our opinions line up. You're the best. Congrats on seven years. I appreciate that, man. Very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Eric, happy seven, brother. Have you watched any 80s martial arts films like American Ninja, No Retreat, No Surrender, or China O'Brien? I have not. I have never really been into martial arts. Uh, as much as I love action, I've never. as a kid, I never really got into it. Uh, a lot of it was like uh subtitles i never liked watching subtitles until i was in my 20s 
I just forced myself to kind of get used to it. And now I can tolerate it. But for the longest time, I would almost refuse to watch a movie if it had subtitles and uh, straight up ignorant on my part. I will totally own that. But that's just the reality. Uh, so there were a lot of the stuff like the Jackie Chan movies and things that were either subtitled or dubbed, which is even worse, in my opinion. Uh, I'd never had the patience to watch. And so I had a very closed minded view of action growing up. And as an adult, I have not really had the desire to go back and watch some of those classic action movies because I don't really think I'm going to appreciate them now. Uh, a lot of those movies were, were awesome and groundbreaking and um, amazing stunts at the time. I don't think they would hit me the same way now after seeing 30 years of adv uh, action movies advanced to today's standards. So that's why just some of those things that I've missed in the past, sometimes it just takes a lot for me to, to finally go back and check them out. Congrats on seven years, Cody. The reason I found your channel was the great cult of Chucky rant. Oh, boy. And been a fan ever since. Love how you always stay true to your opinions. Yeah, that video is a little um, a little difficult for me now because um, going along with getting better, at least what I strive to do as I go on, getting better as a critic, getting better as a content creator, uh, maturing is certainly a part of that. And the first year or so, year, maybe even two years in my channel, I felt like uh, when I look back on it now, there's a lot of things that I didn't say that it's like, oh, man, that's so unprofessional. And, you know, there's times where I still slip into that a little bit. You know, there's people that think the way that I handled the Winnie the Pooh thing this year was unprofessional. And perhaps, <laughs> you know, uh, there's a lot of grievances on my side with that whole thing that uh, that I would be a little bit more digging my feet in the sand about. But nonetheless, the Cult of Chucky review uh, I never even realized until somebody pointed it out to me that there was some things that I said in there regarding some of the actors that were a little bit disrespectful. And um, that's a review. That review alone is why I look forward to one day redoing my reviews for Chucky and eventually Nightmare on Elm Street, the first couple of franchises that I did. I guess Texas Chainsaw would fall into that as well. Because I'd like to have the legacy of my thoughts on those movies be from a professional standpoint, not a loud mouth 27 year old on the internet. So uh, yeah, that one's, that one's a little, a little tainted for me, unfortunately, but yeah, cult of Chucky, man, that was a, that, at the time, especially that was a, a massive disappointment, um, massive blow to the nards for, for, uh, for me as a Chucky fan. Um, Sean Sheridan, any update on cooking channel? No, uh, I, I didn't really have any motivation to do it during the summer. Cause it's so miserably, fucking hot outside and humid and just gross so realistically if that happens this year it's going to be closer to the holiday season but um that's something that's it's always in the back of my head it's just a matter of doing it i just worry about overburdening myself because i have a hard enough time keeping up with this and the video game channel and the video game channel absolutely suffers so i worry if i take a third channel especially because i know here's where the 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 thin line between confidence and arrogance comes in i know i would succeed with a cooking channel and i know i would have a lot of fun with it and i would be motivated to do probably two three videos a week i worry about me stressing myself out overworking myself because nobody helps me with this nobody edits my stuff nobody uh helps me shoot anything my wife would have to help me when i'm cooking obviously but um just from a basic workload standpoint i just I, i'm very hesitant to pull the trigger on it because I just I, I worry I worry that I'll have way too much work and the channels will suffer uh, but it will come it will come hey Nikki I appreciate that thank you so much oh we got a couple just straight up donations Michael Michael Miller appreciate it man William McKenna with $2, well, not $2, <laughs> two. Love you, Cody. Also, do you like Shaun of the Dead? That's one that would be a hot take of mine. I'm not a big fan of Shaun of the Dead. Uh, I do like Hot Fuzz quite a bit. When I watched the Cornetto trilogy, Hot Fuzz was easily the best, in my opinion. I thought At World's End was okay. But Shaun of the Dead is one of those movies that I've watched, I think I've watched it three times, trying to see the movie that everybody else does. And I think my big block with enjoying it on the level that most people do is that I just don't really respond that much to uh, British humor. 
Uh, Brian is very aware of this. <laughs> Look at our thoughts and our differences on our thoughts on uh, dog soldiers from the most recent 31 on 31. He's like, this movie's hilarious. And I was like, dude, that was fucking supposed to be funny. <laughs> like, I never even realized it was a comedy. Um, unless Brian's just weird and it's not funny and he just thinks it's funny, which is also very possible. But no, Shaun of the Dead, I can't tell you specifically what doesn't work for me aside from just the British style of humor never really makes me laugh. So I just don't, that, that's one of the movies where I would agree to this, the statement of, I don't get it. Uh, that's one, I, you know, I should review that at some point so that I can kind of articulate my thoughts. Cause yeah, that that's one that I, there's not many people that I meet that don't love that movie. So I'm very much on an Island with it, but it just, it, I don't know. It just doesn't work for me. Desert Island when uh, spoken into fucking existence. Uh, what's up, Trey? Desert Island, Winnie Pooh, Blood and Honey. Freddy's Dead, Jeepers Creepers, Reborn. If you had to pick one to watch again, what would it be? What the fuck is that? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, my God. Um... It's not Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. That one, shockingly, might be the bottom of the list because of the three here, there is something to be said of so bad that it's entertaining on some level. And that is most people's rationale when they tell me that they actually like Freddy's Dead, that it's so batshit weird that they just kind of like it. And I'm like, that's fine. I get it. I can't get there mentally. Jeepers Creepers Reborn is absolute dog shit on every level. But it's also kind of a marvel to watch and see how epically incompetent it is. And so it's either going to be one of those two, because you can at least get some sick enjoyment out of watching it, where Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey missed the mark on that completely. They could have had some entertainment value and just being batshit, crazy, weird, dumb, stupid, but it took itself ultra serious. And so it's not entertaining on a horror movie front, and it's not entertaining on an accidentally entertaining front at all. So it's either going to be Freddy's Dead or Jeepers Creepers Reborn, and I refuse to pick between the two because you can't make me. It's a rough thing, man. Why does everybody always want to put me on an island with some dumb shit? Give me Terminator 2 and fucking Lost Boys or something to choose from. <laughs> Give me some happiness on the desert island. I'm on a fucking desert island. Brooklyn Furnace. Recently watched Friday the 13th 2009 remake for the second time, and I wish it got a sequel. Which horror movie would you love to see get a sequel? That is one of them. Um... I would have liked to have seen a sequel to The Burning. I felt like The Burning had a lot of potential, but Cropsey was just not memorable enough of a villain for him to kind of catch into the zeitgeist of the time. Um, What is another movie that would be great to have a sequel? It's probably something that came out recently. I just can't think of. Um, it's not necessarily a sequel, but I want to see a sequel to Prey. Um, or a follow-up to pray whether it's following that character as more predators come down to the the native american land or what i would prefer is they go off to a completely different story with a different character in a different land like um a different time period like have that be kind of like the the theme of predator movies going forward is totally different setting different character different vibe to it like i would love to see a predator movie where they go to like feudal japan and you got a fucking samurai that's getting hunted by predator like something like that would be badass um beyond that i, I honestly can't i'd have to prepare for that sometimes when i'm on the spot my brain doesn't work but one of those two that i named have you ever watched paranorman i have not i have not i don't watch too many animated films that i don't have to to review could you give a hint for October's 31 on 31? Uh, yes, I'm going to be preparing a teaser that will be released on August 31st. Uh, but what I can tell you is that the title of this October's 31 on 31 is going to be pain and suffering. And there are many different meanings to that word or that phrase. Uh, there's a number of people that have already figured it out. Cobra Monk 78, congrats on seven years, Cody. Keep up the good work and can't wait to see your channel grow more. Have you seen Smokey and the Bandit? Great comedy. Um, 
Have I seen Smokey? I've seen parts of it. I don't think I've seen. I don't think I've seen it, but I think I've seen parts of it. I want to say my dad was watching. I've seen pieces of it. It's another one of those kind of classic movies that I haven't quite gotten around to yet. I remember. I'm pretty sure that's the one that ends where you got the two like uh, boss hog looking dudes that they put him up to like a race. Like if you can go get me and my daddy some clam chowder and he's like, yeah, you're on. And he's like in 20 minutes, you're still on. And then the movie ends that way. Is that Smokey and the Bandit or is that one of the sequels? I remember that scene distinctly, but I can't tell you shit else about it. <laughs> when the remake comes out either later this year or in 2024, are you going to subject yourself to the torture of doing a Faces of Death review series? If the answer is no, will you at least review the remake? How do you, maybe I'm misunderstanding what Faces of Death is. I thought Faces of Death was a collection of like real things, like footage of actual barbaric shit, like somebody jumping off a building and their fucking head caves in on the pavement, like kind of like uh, what I guess World Star is today. That's what I thought Faces of Death was. If Faces of Death actually like a narrative movie or, um, like an anthology series or something. Cause when you say remaking faces of death, I'm like, how the fuck do you remake a collection of footage? I must have it wrong, but I've never seen them. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if it comes out, I'm probably going to watch it and review it unless it's just absolutely gross. Cause I think faces of death, I think like the video nasties and I just have no interest in, in watching most of those movies. Uh, so it's not likely, but I'm not going to say no, because I'm highly ignorant to the topic of Faces of Death. Uh, somebody says it was staged. So, okay. So, that's, it's it's still remaking. That's a weird term for a movie like that. Have you seen Old Boy? The remake. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I know. And you blow it! I know, I know. Um, this was back when I still refused to watch movies with subtitles, and I saw that the remake had come out with Josh Brolin, and I love Josh Brolin, and um, wasn't that Spike Lee as well, weird enough? Uh, Spike Lee is a really well-known director, and, and I was like, oh, cool, I can watch Old Boy now. <laughs> Ooh. And I watched that movie, and I was like, wow, this is the coolest story in a shitty movie I've ever seen. <laughs> so um, I'm sure I would love the original now that I'm actually, I can watch foreign films, but I have not seen it yet. It's uh, it's on the list, the gigantic CVS receipt of lists of movies that I still have to watch to be deemed worthy. Uh, do you believe in ghosts? Would you be awesome to take you on a legit paranormal investigation? I used to live near Savannah. Also, Child's Play 3 is my fave. Oops, let me turn this bitch off. Now that I got an iPhone, you can just pop that little button there. It's very convenient. Um, do I believe in ghosts? I I don't disbelieve in ghosts, but I have not actually had really a paranormal experience myself outside of something weird that happened when I was a kid. I've told this story before uh, where it, it felt more like divine intervention than a ghost. But my brother had these Power Ranger walkie-talkies. It was like the the Megazord and whatever the bad guy was. And uh, he had them on top of our TV. And my dad, when our, our house in Ohio, the vents were in the floors. And during the winter, my dad used to always bitch at me because I would sleep on a certain side of the bed and I would inevitably always knock my pillow off while I was sleeping and it would cover up the heating vent. And so he used to bitch at me constantly. Sleep on the other end. Sleep on the other end. You're going to start a fucking fire. And you know how you do when you're kids. Eh, whatever, dad, I ain't start a fucking fire. Shut up. And so one night, lay on the same side of the bed, woke up at like two or three in the morning to the sound of. And I'm, what, the, what, what is that? Oh, what? So I'm like, I'm like 11, maybe 12. And uh, I wake up and I'm like, I'm like, what the hell? And I go over and it's my brother's walkie talkies and they're on. Because you know how it makes that sound until you actually press the button to talk. And they're on, and I'm like, what the? And he's dead ass asleep in the top bunk. I'm like, what? The, why are these on? And I turn them off, and I go to get back in bed. And I can't find my pillow, and it's on the vent. And I pick it up, and it's red hot. I'm like, oh shit, dad was right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And so that I had changed pillows because that thing would have probably cooked my side of my face. And um, I went back to bed. And then when I woke up the next morning, I was asking my brother about, it. I'm like, did you get up and play with your walk? No, I don't know what you're talking about. And I don't even th like it just it was weird. I'm like, who turned these fucking things on to wake me up to get my pillow? And so it felt like I guess what I said it felt more like divide intervention. Like somebody was like, nope, they're not dying tonight. I got to save them. He's going to make a YouTube channel in 20 years. Uh, but um, yeah, that's the only weird story that I have to tell that deals with anything supernatural or paranoia. Uh, Child's Play 3 is my fave. You're a good man. Assuming, assuming you're a man. Good person. <laughs> there we go. Good on you. Good Chucky fan. Gavin Moon, are you going to watch The Continental next month? Also, expectations for The Equalizer 3. Uh, yeah, I'm going to check it out. I haven't watched the teasers for it, so I don't really know what they're going for. I know Mel Gibson's in it. That piques my interest, because say what you will about the guy personally. I love his work. Um, and expectations for The Equalizer 3, that it's going to be awesome. It's been an incredible year for action this year. For as amazing as horror was last year, and up until very recently was very disappointing <laughs> this year, Action has been taking the reins because my top three movies of the year right now are all three action films and Equalizer 3 is my most anticipated movie for the rest of the year, especially now that Dune has moved to 2024. So I expect it's going to be awesome. I think both of the first the first two Equalizer films are both pretty kick ass. So I don't expect anything less from this one, especially since it's same people, Antoine Fuqua, Denzel Washington. There's no changing of directors. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. It's going to be pretty awesome. Hopefully. Thank you, Matthew. Appreciate it. Pinhead versus Freddy. This is where it gets a little trickier because, see, I usually and I try to say it's not just because I'm a Freddy fan. It's not me fanboying. When I usually get these versus questions, it's usually Freddy versus anybody. Freddy's going to win because Freddy has unparalleled powers. That none of the other people have. People, Freddy versus Jason. It's like Freddy wins. And then they use the movie as an argument. Well, he he won in the movie. Yeah, with the help of the rest of the fucking cast. <laughs> he was in a nightmare. Freddy himself got him injected, put him into a sleeping state, knocked the fuck out of him in the dream state and was literally killing him by drowning him in the dream state until the humans woke him up and then pulled Freddy out. So he only won in that movie because the humans all helped Jason. You can't argue that. I'm sorry. So you move on to Michael. Same thing. You know, traditionally in more movies than not, Michael is human or at least mostly human. Well, he loses. You have Chucky. I mean, I love Chucky, but bitch, please. Freddie wins. Uh, so you go down the line and it's just like, yeah, there's no there's no stopping a dream demon. Pinhead, however kind of has his own bag of tricks and his own dimensional powers and everything. So that one, I don't know. I'd have to get ultra, ultra nerdy to see who would actually win in that one. That would be a good one. That would be a fight that I'd be like, oh, shit, I might want to see how this turns out. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't know. Tom Rogers. Hey, Cody, what are your thoughts on Jaws and what would you rate it out of 10? 10. Also, I know Freddy's Dead is your least favorite movie, but what is your worst movie that you've seen? Um... I mean, I don't know. Um, when I think of worst movie I've seen, it's all like these. There's there's horrendous movies out there that I would never even go near. There are C level and D level movies that are made that I've never even heard of and would never even give a second glance in a video store or on a streaming service. So the worst movies that I could have possibly watched, I have just walked past them like this. So the fact that I typically only watch more well-known, more mainstream stuff to a certain degree. Um, you have in recent memory movies like Black Christmas 2019. Uh, you have movies like Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. You have movies like what, what the fuck was the worst movie last year? The worst ones don't really stick in my mind as much. I typically try to remember the good stuff. Uh, so whatever the hell my worst horror was it Jeepers Creepers Reborn. I think it must have been. Birdemic 3, I know I put on my ranking, but that's technically a movie for this year. Birdemic 3 would be up there. Those are the movies that I would say are like worst movies I've ever seen. Uh, Freddy's Dead would certainly belong to that, but I'm just more emotionally uh, angry at that movie because of my fandom of the franchise, where on a technical level, 
there's worse movies out there. Uh, but I love Jaws. Jaws is a movie that I don't talk about very often, and it's a movie that I actually don't even really think about all that often, but every single time I rewatch it, like three times during the runtime, I'm just like, this movie's fucking amazing. Why don't I ever think about this more? Why don't I watch this more? It's weird. It's a movie that I know is amazing. I know I love it, but it's not like in my constant rotation of rewatches. But when I do, it's like I'm reminded how fucking great it is. The last time I watched it was actually in 3D in a theater. It was last year. My buddy Joey Sasso, who you guys might know from The Circle and a couple other Netflix shows, uh, he had texted me. He was going off to an L.A. screening of it in um, the Jaws 3D. And I was like, oh, OK, that's kind of neat. And then I looked and my local theater was playing it that night. And I was like, son of a bitch, I'm going. I got to see this. Because typically I don't really care for 3D, but he had came home and uh, texted me and he was like, dude, like it, it, you watch it and it's like the movie was shot in 3D. It's the craziest experience. So I wanted to just see, wanted to see what kind of bullshit he was peddling. And so I went to the theater and saw it and I'll be damned if it wasn't a really cool immersive experience to where I've seen the movie a dozen plus times and the scene where the fucking head comes out of the little hole in the side of the boat made me jump out of my chair because it was in 3D and it was right here. I was like, fuck. I just forgot that it was coming. So the last time that I watched it was in theaters. And if they ever do replay it in 3D, treat yourself. Check it out because it's very cool. Let's see here. Matthew, what do you think about a Nightmare on Elm Street prequel? Maybe something reminiscent of True Detective, but more of a horror series. Would it work? Yeah, I was talking about that a little. Well, to be fair, I was responding to that on uh, Dave McRae's channel. He was doing a live stream last week and uh, I was at the grocery store. I was uh, going from the I was listening to it while I was in the gym and then went from the gym to the grocery store. And uh I've always thought the idea of a nightmare prequel like TV episode or something was cool. I wouldn't necessarily think that it would work as a movie because it'd be very hard to market because you can't market it off of Freddy because he's not really Freddy yet. Uh, and you wouldn't be able to call it something else and have it be any kind of secret because nowadays that's fucking impossible. You couldn't call it like Springwood or something like that. Not only I mean, fans would be fans would figure that out pretty quickly. But even if you called it neighborhood or something fucking bland. And the big thing was like, it looks like a pretty run of the mill kind of true detective uh, murder mystery thing. But at the end, or you realize, holy shit, this is fucking Nightmare on Elm Street stuff. Oh my God. And then all of a sudden there's this buzz created. That would just, that reality is, is gone. You could have done something like that in the 90s or the early 2000s. But uh, he was talking about wanting like Nightmare on Elm Street to become a TV series. And I'm not quite on that train yet. I still want it to stay theatrical. Uh, but when he was talking about a TV series, my mind was working and I commented in twice and I said, maybe something exactly what you just put it. I even said true detective, maybe something like a true detective episodic series where the main character is John Saxton, the Nancy's dad. And have Fred Krueger be somebody that is actively in their lives like a neighbor. He works at the school. He's the gardener or the fucking whatever the hell he is, uh, the, the, the janitor. He works at the school that Nancy goes to, but he's a neighbor. He's somebody that they trust, like all famous serial killers. He was just the guy next door. He seemed like a normal dude. I had him over at my fucking barbecues. Can't believe he had 47 people under his fucking crawl space. Have something like that where Fred Krueger is his neighbor and John Saxon is going and, and trying to investigate these murdered children in the neighborhood. And throughout the series, he's talking and having conversations occasionally with Fred Krueger, his neighbor or coworker, whatever. Uh, not coworker, um, acquaintance, friend, and have it be like a, a Hannibal, Will Graham type thing where they're just kind of he's bouncing off the investigation off of him and talking about it. And all the while, us fans know that's the motherfucker doing it. And you could even have like an episode, I could picture it now, where like something happens and they have to leave Nancy in his care. And you have a whole episode where it's just regular old babysitter stuff where he's watching her and he's he's trying to, you know, let her into the basement to play some board games or something like that. But it's framed almost like that scene in Zodiac where Jake Gyllenhaal's in the basement. It just feels like there's impending doom out the ass. 
I get excited just talking about it. Pay me, <laughs> pay me to write this shit. But uh, yes, that that when we start talking about a Nightmare on Elm Street prequel or a horror series, that's where my mind goes. Like something like that could be cool. But once you get to the end of the season and he finds out that it's Freddy and the whole fucking neighborhood torches him, I don't know where you go beyond that. Maybe bleed into another series of movies, and that was just like a one shot thing. That um, who even owns the rights at this point? Universal, fucking Paramount. I don't know. But that studio's streaming service, it's like a prequel to the new movies coming out. I don't know. Something like that. Just it kind of it's my nipples a little bit hard as a as a Freddy fan. Something different. Congratulations on seven years. Thank you for all you do for the horror community. Sending you nothing but positive energy. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate it. Bronson Wright Wolf, what are your favorite Robin Williams movie quotes? Oh, wow. Movie quotes. I'd have to almost Google some. My, my brain doesn't work well on the on the spot stuff with such specificity. My favorite Robin Williams movies are um, Jumanji, Mrs. Doubtfire, and Insomnia. <clears throat> this is all just bringing up shit that he said in real life. Uh, yeah, I don't know, dude. <laughs> I could just give you my favorite movies right there. But uh yeah, favorite movie quotes. I mean, I would have to watch the movie and and uh, movies like Mrs. Doubtfire. I can almost like every line. I'm just laughing and saying it along with them. But there's not like a specific quote I can think of aside from like "Good morning, Vietnam" that sticks out as like a Robin Williams quote. Son of a bitch stole my line. There, that's a good one. Have you reviewed Charlie's Farm? I enjoyed Kane Hodder's fight scene. I have never even heard of Charlie's Farm. I don't know what that is. Uh, it's got Kane Hodder in it, so it's either something recent, like um, the Hatchet series that's kind of banking off of horror alum, or it's something that he was doing back in the 80s and 90s while starring in the worst Jason movies. Uh, favorite Tremonti album and song. Congrats. Wish you well in the future. Appreciate it, Redbeard. Uh, favorite Tremonti album is probably still the first one. That's the most well-rounded album to me. Uh, he's He hasn't released... A bad album even a mediocre album none of those bands that he's involved with have but um to me that that debut album was it all i was that it was titled had the most variety and was the most well-rounded listen to where there's not really a song on it that i skip to where his later stuff has gotten very progressive and um there there's a lot of different experimental sides to it so they're all good but the first one favorite song i think my favorite song is dust which is the the single off of his third album. Yeah, Cauterize and Dust, third album. Congrats on seven years from Carter. Thoughts on Disney doing their streaming exclusives on physical. Mandalorian 1 and 2, WandaVision, Loki, and Prey are the first to come to 4K and Blu-ray. I'm all for it, man. I'm a, I'm a physical media whore. And I despise the thought of a future to where you have to have streaming services to watch certain things i hate that i always want to have a copy here just in case the fucking internet goes out or in case they do the thing that they always do where they pull it from the streaming service and it's just gone into the fucking ether nobody can see it ever again so the fact that they're doing that gives me hope that uh, i hope that everybody goes out in droves and buys them that are fans of them i've already pre-ordered my copy of prey and I hope they continue to do that because like you have things like last year's Barbarian. That was a top five of the year movie to me. And I can't fucking own it. That drives me nuts. Drives me absolutely nuts. Oh, do you think Chop Top and Sheriff Hoyt would be good DLC characters for Texas? And what gameplay mechanics would you want for those characters? I actually wholeheartedly think that that is the best option. I actually said that. Uh, I wasn't live, but I was playing with a, a guy that I met last night and we were talking about that. And I said, I want to see Chop Top and I want to see Arlie Ermey's character. And I want to see a skin of the remake and the beginning. Uh, well, really all the movies for Leatherface would be cool, but especially the remake and the beginning for Leatherface. And um, what gameplay mechanics? I would imagine Sheriff Hoyt would play similar to the cook where he's older, a little bit slower, but he's more of a smart character and he's more um, for recon kind of stuff. And really, the cook is the only character that's like that. So that would be nice to have another character to play as um, in that regard. 
And I feel like Chop Top would be along the lines of like the hitchhiker to where he's just fast and maniacal and, you know, the death of a thousand cuts kind of character. Uh, what would be different about them? I'm not exactly sure. Maybe uh, an alternate weapon or something like that, where if you get into um, if you get into a close quarters little scuffle with Chop Top, he can pull out his hammer and fucking crack you with the hammer. Uh, I really don't know. But um, yeah, I, if they don't have plans for at least Chop Top as a DLC, then I don't know what the fuck they're doing. I don't know if there's rights issues with certain characters or likenesses or something like that, but they definitely need to expand into the other movies to, to satisfy the, the fans of the franchise beyond this first set of characters. JP, will you and your wife do another episode for Better or Cursed? Uh, the Demolition and Rocky one were hilarious. Yes, we just uh, the summer was so unbelievably busy for us. I have never had a busier summer in my life. Between the vacation that we had planned and we had numerous concerts and I had uh, press screenings that dropped into my lap where I was driving to Atlanta twice in a, in a month. Um, there was so much going on that we were so busy that it would just it just fell to the wayside. But yes, we've already talked about it. We st we've already watched um, Weekend at Bernie's, which was going to be the third movie. And we'll probably watch the fourth movie and record both of them so that I can have two episodes just ready to go. But yeah, that's that's one something that completely my fault as well as hers. She ain't getting off scot-free. God damn it. Um, but that's our fault for not sticking with it right after we launched it because shit just got so busy after school was out. So from May until really a week ago, it's just been balls to the wall around here. Favorite horror film this year? Mine's Talk to Me. Um, it's either Talk to Me or um, Cobweb. I need to watch them both again to kind of decide. They're they're both up there for very different reasons. I think Talk to Me is a little bit better made. Um, there's things about Cobweb in the third act that don't completely work for me, but the rest of the movie surprised the living hell out of me to a point where it kind of stood out as this genuine surprise like Barbarian did, where Talk to Me wasn't as much of a surprise. It was just a really refreshingly well-done take on that kind of subgenre. But it's one of those two. It's one of those two. Uh, the close um, runner-ups behind that would be Renfield, which is more of a comedy, but certainly a horror comedy, and Evil Dead Rise. What did you think of Barry the entire season? Um, this final season, uh, it, it was weird. It was weird. There was things about it that I liked. Um, there was things about it that I think make sense for the show. And over time, I might soften on it a bit, but it was my least favorite season of the four for sure. And it just felt like the show was always darkly comedic, but it felt like it lost the comedy after season three. Season three was just really dark and kind of grim and season four even more so to a degree. And so I really missed that element of it. I missed laughing at the absurdity and at the violence and at the darkness like the first two seasons, especially season two. That's my favorite season. Season four was just very odd. The whole time jump thing was so jarring that it was two episodes after that and i was still questioning whether or not that was actually real or not and by the time it ends the the note that it ends on narratively for the characters and thematically as far as what the show is ultimately about by the end i don't know if that was very satisfying or not uh, i don't want to get into spoilers but like the way that they leave off mr kuzino it's like is that really deserved and what are you saying by that? Like, I, I just don't know. So I didn't hate it, uh, but it's not one of those shows that I would say completely stuck the landing. Let's put it that way. Hey, Locked. Cody found your channel through those old TCM videos years ago. If you were given the franchise, what would you do to revitalize it? Oh, my God. TCM is one of the hardest franchises to ask me that question because they've rebooted or tried to reboot themselves essentially the entire franchise. You have the original, which is one of those movies that was, you could tell, was never really designed to be a franchise, but they wanted to make another one and they were throwing money at Toby Hooper and Toby Hooper, for whatever fucking reason, thought he made a comedy. And he's like, well, now I'm really going to make a comedy then. Give me the money and I'll do it. And so he makes 
Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, which I really enjoy. But even that movie, you could argue, is kind of like a reboot because it, it's tonally nothing to do with the first film. They're unrecognizable back-to-back -back sequels. Then you have Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, which is numerically a sequel, but might as well be a reboot because it's not continuing any of, the, anything, any of the characters from the first two movies. It's just un, it's almost like remaking the first film again. And then you have four, which is just a really awful version of yet again, kind of doing the same thing. Just it could be a reboot by itself. Then you have the actual remake and the beginning. Those are the only movies that back to back narratively make sense timeline wise and don't feel like they're rebooting each other. Then you get Texas Chainsaw 3D, which is going back to the beginning and rebooting. Then you get Leatherface, which is going back to the beginning, a prequel and rebooting with a new Leatherface. Then you have the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Netflix movie that is, yet again, going back all the way to sequelize the beginning or the, the original and rebooting and starting again. So the whole fucking franchise has been like the reset button getting spammed. So what is there left to do? I feel like the Netflix movie had the best approach. I didn't love that movie. I didn't hate it. Execution is not necessarily what we're discussing here, but just the what would I do to revitalize it? I would do something along the lines of what the Netflix movie did, which is where you just turn it into a balls out, unforgiving slasher movie with a fucking madman version of Leatherface and just try to satisfy the bloodlust in the slasher fans because there's nothing to do to recreate what the first film was. That's a product of its time. You're not going to recapture that no matter how hard you try. I feel like the remake did an incredible job at doing a modern version of that. There's no reason to do that for a third time. So their approach was right. It was just the execution that was a little off, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, that, that's why you have some people that actually really love that movie and defend it because it's just giving what slasher fans wants. It's give me the titular villain or the, the signature villain with a badass fucking weapon and a really hulking performance and a cool look. Let him loose on a bunch of people that I want to see get slaughtered for third for for ninety minutes, and that's essentially what that movie is. But uh, I would like to think I'd be attached to a better version of that. Will you and your wife do another episode of For Better? Oh, I already answered that one. Did you send it in twice? If you did, I I appreciate it. But um, yeah, in due time, hopefully by the end of this month, we'll have one for you. Celtic, uh, now that all the films are on 4K and 4K digital, do you have any plans to review all the Universal Monster films? Any plans to review the Final Destination franchise or Urban Legend? I have intentions to review all three of those franchises. Uh, for the longest time, I have wanted to cover the Universal Monster films because most of them I have not seen, but I don't feel like those movies are going to be lost on me because they're so classic that it's impossible not to see why they were iconic and why they were revolutionary for the time when you watch them. Uh, you can even get that when you watch something like Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, where you see the old school effects, transitions, and everything. So I would love to do a review series on that. Uh, Final Destination is probably going to be the soonest of the three, provided that it doesn't get delayed, because we have a new one that's supposedly going to be coming like next year. So I would absolutely do a series um, leading up to that one. And Urban Legend, I'm, I'm less excited about than the other three, but I would be curious to watch them and review them because I haven't seen the first two in years. Uh, is there a third and a fourth one or just a third one? I've never seen anything past two, but the first one was cool at the time. It, like I know what you did last summer, it's kind of like a generic capitalization on the new screen craze. And not nearly as good, but there was things that I liked about Urban Legend. And all I remember about Urban Legend Final Cut was that it had Joey Lawrence in it. <laughs> I was a big Lawrence Brothers fan. I think that was the only reason I rented it. But yes, all three of those um, will be coming at some point. What superhero would you see the Predator fight? Also, do you think the reason why we didn't get a new Nightmare on Elm Street because of Robert Englund being recast and fans don't want that? Uh, what superhero would I see the Predator fight? Batman. That'd be fucking cool. Batman versus the Predator. Uh, also, do you think the reason we didn't get a Nightmare on Elm Street? I think there's a lot of reasons. Um, if, if the remake that came out in 2010 was better 
we would have gotten more. But it wasn't. And I don't think it's... Robert Anglin not being there is is far from the worst thing about that movie and far from the biggest problem that it has. I am one of those people that think that Jackie Earl Haley could have been incredible as Freddy. And I actually think he does pretty damn good in the movie with what they give him. Unfortunately, what they give him is a pile of dog shit. They give him some good lines and he delivers those really well, but they give him fucked up makeup. They gave him a really generic modernization of the original script without making enough changes to it. They put him in a movie that was riddled with horrible CGI that destroys how incredible and impressive those original effects are. Like the old spandex shot, and they just do this fucking CGI cloud. Eat a dick. Whoever the hell decided to do that. Uh, and they made the horrifically fatal mistake of focusing entirely on the um the 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 uh the diddler i'm trying to think of a word that's not going to get this stream pulled the the diddler side of freddy krueger and not the murderer side of freddy krueger now the diddler side of freddy has always been there like suggestion wise but they always had the foresight to never really state it outright or to ever focus on it or confirm it or can canonicize it or anything like that. You know, just little not so subtle things that Freddie did like on the phone and everything always gives you that icky feeling of like, yeah, that guy, mm, yeah, he wasn't just stabbing kids. You know, he was stabbing them with some something else. But the movies, the original movies always focused on the murderer side of things. And that's what allowed Freddie to be an icon because if they had focused on the other things, there's no fucking way Freddie would be as popular as he is now because nobody is going to idolize a diddler. <laughs> nobody. And so it, it sounds weird, but we idolize the killers in these franchises more than we do for the most part, with the exception of like maybe Laurie Strode and Sidney Prescott more than the heroes. And for some stupid fucking reason, they thought that was a good idea is to not even really, they almost kind of ignored completely the child murderer side of things. Freddie never murdered anybody in his previous life in the remake. He just touched them. I, I want to be in the boardroom where somebody suggested that and everybody raised their hands in favor and I have the one down. I'm going, are you fucking, are, are you kidding me? I want all of your names and numbers and badges now on the table. So, yeah, there, there's there's a, a laundry list of issues with that movie before we even get to the fact that Robert Englund is not there. And if a new movie, whenever we do get one, succeeds or fails, I don't think it's going to succeed or fail based off of the presence of Robert Englund. It's going to succeed or fail based off of how well it's written, how well it's directed, and how well they cast and execute the character of Freddy Krueger, which is definitely a monumental task for anybody to step into those shoes. I am not arguing that. I would not want that job. But somebody could do it. It's just a matter of finding him. And I think Robert Englund would be the first person to agree. Jason, Cody, congrats on your seven years. You're my favorite YouTuber. Much respect. Well, thank you. Any idea when we'll be getting some Resident Evil 4 Ada DLC? Keep up the great work. Um, probably a year after the game released. I think that's how long they waited before they gave us the Village DLC, wasn't it? It was like a year. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. They've already talked about having the VR mode, uh, and I haven't seen any dates. So I would say probably February of March next year we'll probably see some DLC drop and it might be the VR stuff first. And then later on in the year, they'll do the ADA. It's not going to be anytime soon. Will you be buying the H2O 25 year steel book? Um, I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. I, I love that movie, obviously, despite its, its flaws. But I've gotten a lot more selective about the 4Ks and the special editions and shit that I buy, especially with the Halloween franchise, because they're fucking whores, man. They put out like eight, nine different versions of everything. Like, yeah, that bullshit box set from last year that was just, it was like $70, $80, something like that, for just H2O, Resurrection, and um, 
was it was it the Rob Zombie movies or was it one before H two O? Maybe it was part six, but it was like it was a three pack of some of the the worst regarded Halloween films, and they wanted like almost a hundred bucks for it. And it was like, fuck you. <laughs> I'll wait till you inevitably put them out individually and I'll buy the one out of that that I actually want, which is H2O. So maybe. Maybe not. Ugh. Cody, what's your thoughts on the new Justified? Uh, I've still only seen the first episode and I'll probably rewatch the first episode because I was incredibly distracted while watching it. But that's a series that I want to see. I want to binge it on my own time. But I liked what I saw the first episode a lot. Justified is a damn good show. So if you like cop shows, that's one to definitely check out. Raylan Gibbons. Baker Reviews. Happy seven years, brother. Here's to many more. Biggest surprise and disappointment of the year so far. Movie that has stuck with you the most in 2023. The movie that has stuck with me the most is Infinity Pool. That's the one that when I get into conversations with people about what's a movie this year that I need to check out, like like regular folk, not as, as movie nerds that know everything that happens. Like when I talk to my parents or my neighbors or whatever, I always bring up Infinity Pool and I just tell them the premise from my interpretation. And there are, like my parents were like, that sounds fucking cool. I need to check that out. I'm like, it's it's weird. <laughs> it's really fucking out there. It's probably not a movie you want to buy. It's probably not a movie you're ever going to watch twice, but it's worth checking out. It's cool. So Infinity Pool is that movie for me that's kind of stuck around a lot longer than I would have thought it has. Uh, biggest surprise of the year. It might be Cobweb. Cobweb or Air. Uh, biggest disappointment of the year. Hmm. Let me, uh, let me pull up my little letterboxed thing because uh, disappointment of the year. I'm going to say it's Indiana Jones. Before I look into this, but I have a list I keep of every movie that I see throughout the year so that my ranking at the end of the year is a little bit less labor intensive. But let's see. Um, Insidious, the Red Door, certainly disappointing. Uh, 65 was pretty fucking disappointing. But I'm trying to think of the one when you think most disappointing is usually one that I have a lot of hope for. And that's going to have to be Indiana Jones. It's going to have to be Indiana Jones. Either Indiana Jones or Scream 6. But Scream 6, I would watch again before Indiana Jones for sure. So there's your answers, Baker. Thank you. How much harder do you how much harder do you think it would be to find success if you just started the channel now? Significantly harder. Uh well done sticking it out, brother. YouTube's a tough game. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, the that goes for all the way back to when YouTube started. That's why you have guys like Jeremy Johns and Chris Stuckman, even more so with Jeremy Johns, to where they don't have to do anything differently. They make videos exactly the same way that they did 10 years ago. Same equipment, probably. Same background. Same style. They don't have to change shit, and they still make views just hand over fist because they're indoctrinated in from being, you know, one of the early adopters of YouTube and being one of the, the kind of first big YouTube movie names. So when I started seven years ago, I remember being on a live stream with Sean Chandler and Tyler Tompkins and Durbania. And, you know, we were talking about our channels and like we were all still under a thousand subscribers. And like, what would you change? Pretty much all of us always said, I wish I started sooner. And that's just a fact of the matter. You know, there's some people that can, can luck out or just generally through talent, they can start and they can far surpass channels that are older and grandfathered in, if you will. But for the most part, if you're going to be doing especially something like this, where movie channels are a dime a dozen and there's, you know, a thousand of them that start every single day. The sooner you get into it, the better and the later you wait, the harder it is to stand out. So, yes, it would be exponentially harder to start today. Do you have a favorite video that you've done? Also, would you would love to see you do a series of pitching ideas for reboots and remakes? Keep on killing it, man. I've actually thought about doing a video series like that um, and kind of tying both of those questions together. My favorite video that I've ever done is the very first video of um, Pitch Wars, which is for anybody that doesn't know what that is. I think it was like year three of my channel, maybe year two. It's been a long fucking time. But me and uh, Chris Durbin from Durbania, which is a channel that's it's not really around anymore, but he he was 
he was around for the the first probably five years that I was on YouTube, collaborated with him often, still one of my my uh, very close friends. Uh, we I had an idea that I wanted to do like a competition show where I have a guest on, we have a set theme, and we both pitch our idea for a movie within that theme, and then we let the audience in the comment section pick the winner. And it only made two episodes. It was one with Durbin and one with CP. The one with Durbin was uh, to make our own DC movie. And this was after Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, and Suicide Squad was out. And um, we were, I don't think Wonder Woman was out yet. And we had already kind of seen all of the, the terror on the horizon of Justice League. So he came in with a pitch for his version of Justice League based off of the first three movies in the franchise. I came in with kind of uh, an alternate history version called um, Gotham, which would have been the second movie in the franchise after Man of Steel and would have, in my opinion, what I was going for was properly sequelizing Man of Steel, introducing Batman and setting up Batman v Superman. And so it was just very fun to write that and nerd out and get my, my, my Batman thing going because I'm a Batman whore. And editing wise and shooting wise, it was just a very fun video. And Chris is just infectious with his his nerdy energy that he has about the Justice League characters and his script. And it was just a blast to watch him pitching this idea to me, most of which was off the cuff. So that was an absolute blast of a video to, to make. Uh, and I wish it would have succeeded more. That was kind of that was kind of an idea that I thought, man, this is something that my channel is going to be known for. And it just died on arrival. And there's been a few times over the past probably year or so that I've had the idea to bring it back again, but I've seen other channels do variations of it, which kind of took my wind out of my sails and um, some other reasons why I haven't quite jumped on it yet. But that's still an idea in the back of my head where I'm like, I need to, I need to bring pitch wars back. I need to do a, a, a better version of that. So, uh, but yes, so tying them together, we'd love to see you do a series pitching ideas that kind of goes along with that. Cause I would have fun doing that for sure. Devin Lott, happy lucky number seven, and many more, my friend. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. The Disney Nerd, you want a terrible horror movie recommendation? Titanic 66. God. Titanic? I'm assuming he meant Titanic. Titanic 666 is by far the worst movie I've ever seen. Yeah, there's a lot of those bargain bin movies. Like when you go to Walmart, anytime there's a movie release, there's going to be like a, a dollar store version that has a similar title trying to fool stupid people into buying that movie like oh shit i saw avatar released it's already here at walmart look avatar or something like that <laughs> it'll be like one letter off and god bless them probably like senior citizens buy the shit out of those movies and then you talk to them like avatar fucking suck <laughs> they didn't even see it they saw the walmart version but uh yeah i'm sure there's there's movie significantly worse than whatever i would call the the worst movie i've seen that are out there kevin l top five castlevania games i have never played any of them i missed that franchise entirely i didn't grow up with us um a nintendo so i never played the originals and the different iterations we've had since then i just kind of i don't know never took interest in so sorry i can't give you a better answer but i, I i've never um never played any of them Baker Reviews, would you rather watch a 2 out of 10 movie or a 5 out of 10? More times than not, a 2 out of 10 movie is more interesting to watch because a movie that's just okay or mediocre or just kind of boring or unmemorable is exactly that. It's two hours of, uh, I could have wasted, I could, I could have done anything with that two hours and been happier. A movie that is epically bad on like a one out of 10, two out of 10 movie, there's at least some memorable sense to your experience because of how bad that it is. Like I would rather watch something like Jeepers Creepers Reborn than watch something like We Have a Ghost. A movie that's epically bad that is going to stick in my memory for why it is epically bad. And I'm going to have plenty of healthy conversations about what the fuck went wrong with that thing versus something where it's just like, Oh, yeah, that happened. I forgot the title of the movie until you talked about it. So, yeah, two out of ten for that for that one. Dan Murphy, congrats on seven years. Big stuff, man. Yes, sir. I just watched Ambulance. I've never wanted a film to end so bad. Genuinely shocked critics and audiences gave it a positive review. What's your go-to Halloween watch? 
Yeah, I I was hoping for ambulance because I do like Michael Bay. He absolutely deserves the criticisms that he gets, but he's got a number of movies in his uh, catalog that are highly entertaining to me. The Rock is incredible. I love the Bad Boys movies. Um, Armageddon is great. The Island, I think, is highly underrated, although I wish that would have been like a rated R thriller and not a PG-13 Michael Bay action movie. And that movie, that story would have been incredible. Um, I'm, I'm missing a couple others, but uh, he's got some good movies. He can He's a good director. He just has some tendencies that are kind of fucked. Ambulance looked like it was going to be hearkening back to his old school stuff. Simple concept. Jake Gyllenhaal is uh, the co-lead, and I love him. Uh, you got... The new Candyman in there, Yahya Abdul Mateen, and he's great. But yeah, that movie was not good, <laughs> not very good at all. And uh, it, it was a movie that, yeah, it was it was a little exhausting to watch. So I was there with you. I was like, can this end now, please? This doesn't need to be two hours and fifteen minutes. Go to Halloween Watch more times than not nowadays. It's the original Hocus Pocus. We go trick-or-treating, we come home, I either get a pizza or I make a bunch of junk food. It's kind of our tradition. And then we sit down and we watch Hocus Pocus and eat some junk. Used to be John Carpenter's Halloween, and then I just got burnt the fuck out on even hearing about that movie. And so it, I haven't watched John Carpenter's Halloween in October in probably four years, five years. How long has it been since 2018? Five years. Homelander versus Omni-Man, Homelander. And I'm only saying that because I've never watched the cartoon of uh, that Omni Man's in. Dale Strunk, all oh, reliable. Congratulations on seven years, Cody. Cheers to you and keep being awesome. I will try, sir, to the best of my ability. Hope you're doing well. Here's Jody. I need that as a fucking sound bite. I need to add some more. Lucas Griffin, if you and the Autop stream members started a band, what kind of band would it be? I'm thinking death metal or a boy band with Uncle Sean in front. Um, well, three out of the four of us have very similar music tastes. Um, Brian is the only outlier to where he names bands I've never even fucking heard of as far as uh, his musical taste. And he said Alice in Chains is too depressing for him. So when he said that, I knew that we were not music brothers. But uh, yeah, me and CP have very similar music taste. And Sean used to be in a rock band himself back in the high school days, if I'm not mistaken. So yes, all three of us would probably tie Brian up and force him to be a rock band. But if we do be a boy band, yes, Sean would have to be the Justin Timberlake of the group because until I have reached physical peak... <laughs> He's the one that would look best shirtless on the cover. Are you excited for Spider-Man 2 on PS5? That's my most anticipated game of the rest of the year. And next to Resident Evil 4, it was my most anticipated of the entire year. So yes, I cannot wait for it. What horror crossover movie would you want since Freddy versus Jason and Alien versus Predator are the only ones? Um, well, I don't think we're in a place in the horror landscape that would make sense for any of those movies right now. If we were going to get more, it would have been in that mid 2000s era when both of those movies came out because one of them came out in 2003, one of them came out in 2004. So you probably had till about 2007 maybe 2008 to squeeze in a few more. Um, I was always surprised that they didn't do a Freddy versus Jason versus Michael um, or find a way to get Ash Williams in there somehow, just some way to sequelize Freddy versus Jason for as successful as that was. I was surprised that they never jumped on that in some way. Maybe it was a rights thing. I don't know. Uh, I mean, it was a kind of a miracle that Freddy versus Jason even happened. So maybe they were just like, fuck that. <laughs> we went through enough hell getting this one out. Um, I would have liked to. Hmm. Freddy versus Pinhead would be interesting, although I don't know just what that movie would be exactly. Uh, a lot of people say Jason versus Michael. I don't think a movie with two silent pro um, antagonists would make very much entertainment. <laughs> I mean, you got to have one of them talking shit at least. So I, I don't, I no, that would not be for me. Um, Freddy versus Chucky. 
uh, too silly, too silly for me. You would have to really lean into the the the, the craziness and the the campiness to make that work. So, yeah, you would either have to throw in Pinhead Michael Myers or Ash Williams into the Freddy versus Jason mix, and that's the one that would pique my interest. Uh, but yeah, as of right now. I can't think of any crossovers that would make sense that would that would even be taken seriously in today's horror landscape. I just don't think it's the time for it. Maybe in the future we'll get back to it, but I don't see that connecting with people nowadays. Any favorite Chevy Chase movies you a fan of his? Um yes and no. I'm certainly not a fan of him as a person because I've just seen nothing but ev pretty much everybody that works with him just says he's the biggest asshole in the world. Uh, and I have no reason to, to doubt that. So he's not somebody that I'd necessarily uh, feel inclined to like very much. But uh, the original Vacation is great. Christmas Vacation is great. I'm a big fan for nostalgic reasons of Man of the House, which is the Disney movie with... Um, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Not a Caddyshack fan. I, I saw it way too late in life. Didn't really make me laugh. Same with Animal House. I know he's not in that one, but Animal House is the other like huge comedy classic that I watched and I was like, not funny. Uh, so I'm trying to think of other Chevy Chase movies. I've never seen Fletch or any of the Fletch movies. I know that's his kind of his franchise. So just vacation and Christmas vacation. Noah, hey Cody, love the channel. You mentioned Freddy and his power. What fear do you think he would use to beat all the main horror icons? Also for a Robin Williams movie quote, I get the wild card, Will. If you know, you know. Yeah. Um, what fear would he use to beat all the horror, main horror icons? Um, well, for the longest time with Chucky, it would have been him staying in the doll permanently. And then around Seed, now it would be him going back into a human body. <laughs> so it depends on what era of Chucky. Jason is anything with his mother. Uh, not, I know they used water in the movie, but him, he's not afraid of water. That was just something like a little convenient, like, shh, don't mention this. Fire and water, it makes sense. Uh, Michael... For what we know doesn't have any fears so it would have to be something there's got to be they never explored what actually makes him tick outside of the rob zombie movies and that maybe that's a good thing but it would have to be whatever caused him to snap maybe freddie would be able to to know what that is um candy man i assume would be him being tortured again killed again i don't know Probably go all day, listen to all these, but yeah, <laughs> it would have to be whatever there uh, is tied to the trauma that created them, made them into villains. Gavin Moon, what's the weirdest cameo you've ever seen? Um, oh, I got one actually. Never mind. We'll go back to that. Oh, shit, I already unstarted. Um, Michael, <laughs> Freddie, if he was going to take down Michael Myers, he would just bring in Buster Rhymes. <laughs> there you go. Gavin Moon, what's the weirdest cameo you've ever seen? I was watching Pop Star with Andy Samberg the other day, and it was a very strange cameo from Derek Mears. The weirdest cameo that I can think of in recent memory is in that movie Strays that's in theaters right now. There's a random as fuck Dennis Quaid cameo in it. And the whole joke of the cameo is that it's a Dennis Quaid cameo. And it's just like, what is it about Dennis Quaid that makes this funny? Like most of us know who Dennis Quaid is, but there's not like some in joke with Dennis Quaid that makes him showing up bird watching and strays hilarious. And so that was the weirdest fucking thing where I was just I almost laughed at that in the theaters like, what the fuck was the point of that? Uh, it was it was it was odd. Congrats on seven years from Alex. I've always liked your take on Terminator being a horror movie. I've always thought the same for No Country for Old Men. Would you agree with that take? I would have to watch it again. Um, I've never saw it as a horror movie, but there is a bit of a relentless stalker slasher edge to Anton Chigur for sure. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't think you were nuts for bringing that up. Let's put it that way. But no, I've always found it as a, as a crime thriller myself, but I'm not a gatekeeper when it comes to 
subgenres and stuff. Some people get ridiculous with that. Seven's not a horror movie. Silence of the Lambs is not a horror movie. Terminator's not a horror movie. It's like, well, it fucking is based off of my definition. So whatever. Summit. Can you do another live stream with Adam Does Movies? Great chemistry in both of your movie theater stories were hilarious. And can he be in 31 on 31? Never. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Adam's a good dude. He um, we, we had interacted a little bit and then um, he invited me on his channel for for two live streams. Now we had fun. We, we, we connect a lot on that whole um, jaded rant about you know kind of the the old man on the the porch rocking chair kind of look at a lot of modern things with movies and the movie public and so we, we have fun with that but uh yeah i would absolutely do more i don't do many live streams on this channel at the moment or i would if and when i do i would absolutely um extend an invite to him uh as far as 31 on 31 i'm not sure i'm not sure uh we are as of right now if he can swing it he he kind of promises that he's going to do it. So he's kind of not inviting himself, but he's like challenging himself to be a part of it. As of right now, Rudy's going to join us for this October's 31 on 31. Uh, so he's going to join in on the pain and suffering. But um, it just depends. It depends on the theme. Some themes I like just kind of keeping to ourselves. Sometimes I see a theme and I'm like, you know, this channel, this this person would be fun with this. So there's a number of people out there that I've collabed with that I that I like that I would invite to a 31 on 31 if it made sense. But you know, most of them I, I enjoy just keeping it as a as an us thing. Devin Lott, when is the giant sized off the shelves mail back? Well it's not going to be giant sized um uh, but it's just uh it'll it'll be the first first week of September. I haven't bought a ton of Blu-rays and that's why I haven't done it off the shelves in two months because it just I haven't I don't have many to show off and uh it's not that I don't have enough fan mail is just i've been so busy keeping up with new releases and stuff that there hasn't been a spot in the schedule that makes sense to do a a video so the end of this month is is now officially over with summer movie season and we're gonna we're gonna slow down a little bit before we get into horror movie season so yes we'll begin in september we'll uh we'll get caught up on that congrats from alan i love your channel i appreciate it it brings me some good enjoyment while i'm at work yeah, that's I, I hear that from a lot of people. So I, I'm glad that I can be that person because I struggled to find channels that had enough videos and podcasts to keep me entertained at work. Because God, did I need it. My favorite line of yours will always be this movie can suck my white ass. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. That was Seed of Chucky on the second 31 on 31. If I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what I said. I was like, Seed of Chucky, this movie can suck my white ass. Enough said. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, Lord. That's a good one. It's a good one. Put it on a T-shirt. Elite, you know, 3C Films. He's a movie YouTuber. I do. I have known I've known of Chris for a very long time. He's been in our movie circles ever since I started. He was he was not always as big as he is now. There was a long time there, a few years where I would just kind of see his channel pop up every once in a while and see him in the comment section here and there. Uh, and then he really took off over the last number of years. But yes, I, I've known of him for a long time. And then I actually met him at Megacon this past March. Uh, very nice guy. So yes, I've I've interacted quite a bit with Chris. I had him on my channel talking about the first season of Chucky. Um, but yeah, I, I've known 3C for, for quite a while. Oh my God, we're actually seeing the bottom. Four more super chats. All right. Punisher versus Predator. 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 Sorry, Frank. Indiana Jones versus Predator. Predator. <laughs> Predator would beat Indiana Jones with the Punisher. <laughs> would you and Holly ever do a couples Q&A live? Um, I'm not opposed to it. I... I I get nervous about including my family beyond a certain point because I know how ugly people can be. And while the vast majority of everybody that watches this channel is awesome, I fear doing a live stream and somebody saying something that will affect her far more than it would ever affect me just for the sake of, of being an asshole. Somebody would do it. 
And, you know, I've been doing this for seven years now and even a year in, it was never anything where there wasn't much somebody could say that would genuinely like fuck with me. It might annoy me. It might piss me off enough to where I respond to it, but it's not like going to fuck with my day or I'm going to carry that around. And I don't know if my wife would be that way or not. And so I always, uh, my kids and my wife, I always try to keep away from the ugliness. And, you know, I, God forbid anybody says anything about my kids. I'll jump through the fucking screen at somebody. So I just I for my own sake of not being defensive and protective and for their sake of not having to see how ugly some people can be. I am always been a little bit guarded about that. But in a perfect world, if I could guarantee that that wouldn't happen, I think that that would be fun. And maybe one day we'll try it. I'm not sure. Mason, my dream is to make a movie about two guys who become superheroes after acquiring a bunch of drug money titled Frogman Thoughts. That is a wild idea. It's so crazy, it might just work. Uh, I don't know where the name comes from. I must be missing a reference there. But it sounds interesting. In a, in a time where superhero movies are far overexposed and there's way too many of them, that's something that actually kind of stands out a little bit. So yeah, go for it. Try it. Oh, let's see. All right, let me scroll up and see if I can start catching up with uh, some of the regular old chats now that I've caught up a bit. Any plans to review Starfield? Um, possibly. I still don't know what Starfield is. I know it's the only Xbox release this year that anybody's talking about. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's coming out next month, I believe. I'm definitely going to try it, especially since it's on Game Pass. How the fuck they make money on Xbox exclusives is beyond me. But uh, Yes, I will be reviewing Texas Chainsaw after I get some more time in with it, and I will be reviewing Starfield, especially since I've been kind of taking a little bit of like a three-month hiatus on that video game channel, so I need to get back in the game. Oh, let's see here. Pitch Wars was great. Cool, I got an old school here. Any plans to continue to upload on Game Chamber? Yes, as I, I kind of just answered that to a certain degree, but... um. I did a live stream with CP. I plan on doing more gaming live streams, whether it's with him or by myself playing Texas Chainsaw because I'm having a lot of fun with it. I would have done a couple more already if I wasn't under the weather. I just didn't want to be on camera and interacting when I was feeling fucked up. But now that I'm feeling better, uh, I will be doing more. And then as we start to get some of these releases by the end of the year, like Starfield, Spider-Man 2, Alan Wake 2, you'll definitely have a lot more content. There was just a good three, four month stretch. There were nothing of interest to me was coming out and I kind of lost interest in playing games and then by extension talking about games for a bit. I go through those phases sometimes where I just don't pick up a controller for a while. Oh, my most overrated movie of all time. I answer it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. What have we got here? A fucking comedian. Max, I respect the bold, bold, bold take, sir. <laughs> I would love to hear why. But um, yeah, that hurts my heart. Um, I could understand calling it overrated, but saying that the, then following it up by saying stupid movie, that means that you think it's actually a shit movie, not just overrated. That's wow. Uh, but no, I, I disagree. <laughs> I disagree as much as I can disagree. Uh, most overrated movie of all time. The two in my world is John Carpenter's Halloween and The Dark Knight. And I love both of those movies. You can love something and still call it overrated. I think it's here. Everybody else thinks it's fucking oh, through the ceiling, out the roof to outer space. 12 out of 10. And it's just not quite. The movies have their faults. They're awesome. I love them. Some people out there act like John Carpenter's Halloween gives them a fucking blowjob every time that they watch it. And some people out there love the dark Knight so much that they act like other comic book movies have not existed since. And it's just, I don't belong to those crowds and the constant interaction with those crowds kind of softens me on movies that I loved where I'm like, okay, they're great, but I'm fucking sick of hearing about how great they are because they're not perfect. There's other movies that are better. Wise guy 100 3C is a good YouTuber, but he does a lot. Eh, I don't want to get into all that. I don't know. I, I will say this. Every YouTuber to a certain degree 
probably does things that not all audience members would agree with or like. And there is also infinitely more things that get said about them and made up about them and inferred about them that is absolutely not true. So whatever the rest of that sentence was, I can't comment on it and I don't want to spread anything because it's not fair to Chris. <clears throat> avatar yeah i didn't i didn't i didn't really mean to, <laughs> to make it a mix of avatar and that other word we're not supposed to say anymore but uh, that was just kind of me adding <laughs> a letter that that was an accidental funny <laughs> rock is good but it has some flaws yeah i mean there's very few movies out there that that many of us would agree are flawless Did the chat freeze on here? It must have. Hang on, guys. The chat froze officially on this side of things. So let me open up the video and get the chat from here because I'm probably behind on Super Chats again. Son of a bitch. All right. StreamYard. What the fuck, man? That happened the last time I streamed too, I think. All right. Let's see here. Oh, Lord. Yes, there's a number of these fucking things that I've missed. Okay, guys, uh, let's see. Did anybody do a super chat before Jason Carpenter saying, oh, you know what? Actually, hang on. There's a better way to do this. Sorry, guys. Give me one second. Um, earn. Supers. There we are. Never mind. There is a, a more effective way to do this than what I was doing. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, there's a number of them I'm behind on. Yeah, apologies, guys. For some reason, my chat just froze on this side, and I didn't realize it until I was just making my way through, not realizing those comments are 20 minutes old. Uh, let me see here. Okay, so we have, they're not going to show up on screen, unfortunately. I wish I could reset this, but I'm afraid to touch anything, and it will close the stream out. Maybe one day, if that happens on a Patreon stream, I'll be able to play with it without any repercussions. Uh, Mason Arnold was the last one. Okay, Film Reflection with $5. Hey, man, love the channel. Just curious if you've ever seen the show True Blood. I have not. I saw one episode on, like, season three or four. Uh, whatever episode ended with um, Michael Sheen, like on like a live broadcast almost like a uh fox news or some shit like that and he like was talking about something and then he looks in the camera and he's vampired out and covered in blood like whatever episode ended with that i watched that episode with my uncle my uncle god rest his soul uh last time that he visited us was a big true blood fan and he threw it on randomly and i had no interest in it because it just seemed like a rated r version of twilight to me ignorantly because I never watched it to give it a chance. And so I just kind of sat and, and halfway watched an episode with him. That's all I've ever seen. That's another one of those shows, though, that I've never really heard overwhelmingly positive things about it, especially the way that it ended that convinces me to put the time in to watch it. Like when there's a show where everybody's like, it's fucking great from start to finish. Those are the ones where I'm like, good. <laughs> so the time that I invest will be rewarded. Not things where like people ask me, like, is Dexter worth checking out? And I'm like, absolutely. Oh. Mm, that's a loaded answer uh and so like you want to recommend it because the first number of seasons are incredible and there's some good stuff later on but you get not one but two shitty endings oh fucking dexter new blood all right uh max newbauer i believe is how i pronounce that uh 499 oh yeah max true romance hater <laughs> that's your name from now on I honestly think Transformers 3 is Michael Bay's best movie. Hmm. You're all about the hot takes tonight, sir. Yes, far better than The Rock. Pain and Gain is his only film I think sucks. Pain and Gain is weird because Pain and Gain as a movie I think is very entertaining, but it's icky because it's a true story. And so when you actually think I'm sitting here laughing and being entertained by a story where real people were murdered. Those are those things where Michael Bay just has a big disconnect where it's like, dude, do you not see the optics of what you're doing? 
Konskai, $5. I just finished rewatching New Nightmare, and I hate to say this, but every time I rewatch it, I like it less. Do you have any movies that do that to you? New Nightmare, <laughs> actually. Uh, there, there's a number of other movies, too, where every time you lose this little, little, little piece of a bit where you're like, yeah, not, not quite as good as I thought, is it? Uh, but, yeah, uh, New Nightmare is weird because I think New Nightmare is... You could make a strong argument that that's the best written movie in the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise because it's a very, very smart concept. It's basically Wes Craven stretching his arms and his legs for Scream, saying, hmm, okay, let's see if this works. And I think he perfected it with Scream. But it's a very smart movie, especially for its time and for kind of turning the franchise on its head a bit. But beyond that, uh, and a very, very good performance from um, Heather Langenkamp, arguably her best. Beyond that, for Freddy fans, in my mind, at least for me as a Freddy fan, there's not enough in the movie that I really go to a Freddy movie for. There's only really two kills. Like, you get the kill thing at the, the dream sequence at the beginning, but two actual kills. You get the husband and you get Julie. And both of them are derivative kills of previous movies. Her husband's kill is very derivative of Dan's kill in part five. And Julie's kill very directly is recreating the Tina kill from the first film. So there's not even really a unique kill there. The design of Freddy is awesome, as is the, the little bit of performance that you get out of Robert Englund. Getting back to that darker Freddy that a lot of us missed. But beyond that, it's a movie that I think is an interesting treat for Nightmare on Elm Street fans, but I'm never in the mood to watch it. When I'm in a Freddy mood, that's one of the last ones that I'll pick, even over movies that I don't think are as good, like Dream Master or Part 2. Uh, so, yeah, I'm with you. Every time I watch it, I'm like, eh, let me, okay, let me, let me check out New Nightmare again. I, I'm never fully satisfied by it. I don't, I don't know exactly why. Patrick Bateman with five bucks. Hey, Cody, congrats on seven years. Thank you. I don't know if you've ever talked about them, but what are your thoughts on Wolf Creek and do you ever plan on reviewing it? Um, maybe one day. Here's my Wolf Creek story. So I worked at a video store for my first job. Very fitting. I know it's unbelievable, right? Just out of nowhere. Uh, but I worked at a video store when I was 15. And um, we used to be able to rent one movie for free every single day if we wanted to. And it was during one of the worst years of movies ever <laughs> where there was just not much good coming out at all. So a lot of the movies I was running were just duds with few exceptions. And I remember Wolf Creek kept kind of having I kept having my eye on it and I wasn't really online hearing anybody discuss it. It just it seemed up my alley. So I rented it and I love my father very much. But my dad is a fucking crybaby if he does not want to watch or participate in something like there's wearing it on your sleeve and then there is shoving your sleeve in somebody's face. And so he did not. He is very impatient with subtitles, especially, but thick accents in movies, too, is almost like subtitles to him. Like he won't watch Guy Ritchie movies, can't get into them. It's like what I used to be times a billion. <laughs> so there's some movies that I watch where I'm like, there's some British accents, but just fucking get over it and watch it. So he's just a crybaby when it comes to that kind of stuff. And so you have this that's a very Australian movie. And so the dialect and the accents and just this talking that's not familiar to him, he's just kind of like not really getting into it. And the first hour or so, the movie's very slow from what I remember. I've only seen it once. And so I just remember the first hour where I'm watching it and I'm I'm at least invested to see where things go because I know it's going to go gnarly at some point. And my dad is literally like six fucking feet over to the left in his chair. Just the whole every five seconds. <sighs> just any impatient sigh that you could think of. He did a variation of that for like 45 minutes to where I eventually just got fucking pissed. And I was like, fuck it. I'll take it back. <laughs> and so I, I took it out. I eventually watched the rest of it myself later on, but I was just like, I can't take this anymore. Fucking here, watch something else. So um, that was the one and only experience that I've had watching Wolf Creek. I, I wasn't a massive fan of the movie. The experience could have been one of the reasons why. But uh, yeah, um, 
I haven't seen uh, how many Wolf Creek movies are there? Uh, two, three. Uh, I haven't seen any of the sequels. So maybe one day I'll review them. I'm not sure. You know, eventually, I'm going to have to start reviewing things that I've put in the back burner because I, I <laughs> they're just got to keep pulling, the, pull out the well. Like, oh, fuck, I got saw. Oh, shit, I got leprechaun. And uh, eventually I'll, I'll pull out Wolf Creek. Go into the movies. Congrats on everything. I love to binge horror series and watch your reviews after each movie currently going through Friday the 13th. Interesting. Is it so that's a first time watch for you or um, watch your reviews after each movie? OK, I don't know if it's a first time watch, but if it is, that's interesting. Uh, be curious to see what you think, because that's a that's a series that lives or dies off nostalgia, in my opinion. Uh, Zachary Cooper, would you want to see anything else in the Breaking Bad universe or think Better Call Saul was a good send off? I think Better Call Saul was a good send off and I don't think they need to poke the bear or swat the hornet's nest a third time. I thought the same thing after Breaking Bad. I was like, it's perfect. It's immaculate. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Don't you fucking dare. And then they did um, El Camino. And I was like, oh, oh, that was pretty good. I'll take it. Fuck yeah. Good job. And then they were going to do Better Call Saul. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, another amazing show. Holy shit. You crazy bastards. You just did it. And so uh, I have no reason to doubt that creative team. If the, if if Vince Gilligan came out tomorrow and said, I have another idea, <laughs> I've got some, I got an itch that I want to scratch. I'd be like, you crazy bastard, you do it. But at the same time, to me, it's just like it, it, catching lightning in a bottle once is lucky enough. You caught it multiple times at this point. It's time to leave the beach <laughs> before you fucking get struck yourself. Um, but yeah, if I was in charge, if Vince was my close personal friend, and he was like, what do you think? Do you think there's more juice to squeeze out of this? Do you think there's more to tell? And I'd be like, dude, it was already fucking perfection once. You made it perfection again. I don't think. I, I want to see what Vince Gilligan will do with something outside of the Breaking Bad universe. I want to see what else you got. Tanish Q. Congrats, Cody. You are blessed to have one of the coolest jobs in the world. I absolutely am. Uh, to watch movies early and talk about them for a living. I don't get to see too many of them early, but a couple of them. But yes, discussing them for a living. If you found my young self, whether, I mean, going all the way back to like middle school me, it was like a Marty McFly moment where I go back in time and I'm just like, dude, you get to review movies for a fucking living at a certain point. It would be like, that makes sense. <laughs> anybody that knew me growing up that figures out that I, that I I do this for a living now, because I don't talk to anybody hardly from uh, Ohio that I grew up with, save for maybe one or two people. But anybody that I haven't remained in contact with that uh, finds me, they'd be like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> There's no, no question whatsoever why he ended up doing that. But uh, But yeah, thank you. Yes, I'm absolutely blessed. Adrian with 10 bucks. I know we're heading to a mainstream decline in comic book movies, but I feel like 09's Watchmen should get a proper sequel. It, to me, was ahead of its time, despite the R rating could really thrive nowadays. Um, I don't know what sequel story there is to tell with Watchmen. I haven't seen the TV series. I know the TV series was a sequel, was it not? And I've heard that was really good, so maybe I would change my tune if I watched that. But uh, Watchmen is a perfect solitary story. And I, I, as I've gotten older, there's a lot of times where if a movie is a perfect beginning, middle and end, and there's not things that are left lingering that are worth exploring to me, I'm just like, it's, it's perfect as it is. There's no reason to sequelize it. There's no reason to go back. Um, so to me, that movie thematically comes to a really nice full circle close by the end of it. And I don't need to see what happens after that. I personally don't. Oh, uh, let's see here. Ian McGrath, Don Mancini did actually pitch an Elm Street Chucky crossover movie where Freddie and Chucky challenge each other to a killing contest to prove who is the best killer. Awful idea, by the way. Yeah, that sounds fucking terrible. And that sounds like something that Don Mancini would pitch <laughs> back in the, the 2000s, right before Seed of Chucky came out. Now, you could have the silliest version of Freddy and the silliest version of Chucky and do that and it makes sense, but I don't want the silliest version of either of those characters to get that idea made. Ugh. 
Uh, M. Said, you meet Arnold Schwarzenegger. What would you say? Just tears. <laughs> what would I say uh, after I've collected myself? I would say, Mr. Schwarzenegger, you have no idea how important your work was to me growing up. There is everybody has artists that they love and artists that they appreciate. But for me, you belong in a different category to where those of us that didn't have the best circumstances growing up and movies or music or what say you was absolutely the escape that allowed you to get through your childhood and still be able to look back on it and say my childhood was awesome. You are in that category of making my childhood awesome. I would say some variation of that. Appreciate all of your work. One of my favorite channels. Thank you, Triple 14 Music. Jason Carpenter back again. Cody, whenever I'm having a bad day, I watch your Halloween 5 review and always makes me laugh my ass off. Resurrection is number one worst with H5 right behind it. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a funny one. Cobra Monk 78, what was your favorite Genesis game? Uh, I loved the Sonic trilogy. Uh, Comic Zone was badass. I really liked this game called um, Zero, the Kamikaze Squirrel. Scooby-Doo Mystery was interesting, although I always preferred the Nintendo version of it. Uh, the Sega version was more like a point-and-click mystery. Uh, I had a couple Terminator games that were cool for the time. Toy Story was a great game. Aladdin, Lion King, even though they were miserably hard. Back then, movie-related games were a lot better because <laughs> they didn't have to prove themselves as much. Blue Collar Teamster with 20 bucks. Big fan, dude, is the thing being remade? Uh, not that I know of. And if I haven't heard about it, it's probably not true because I'm pretty dialed in. Uh, I know that there was talk about Blumhouse doing some The Thing movie. I don't necessarily know if it was a remake. I think it was just going to be like a probably more appropriately titled a reboot. But um, I haven't heard anything about it in well over a year. This was after, of course, the the Halloween trilogy was was performing very well with audiences. And they were like, John, you want to do a thing with us? And I was like, sure, I like money. Uh, so that was probably along, along the lines of the, the conversation. Uh, and so will it happen? I don't know. Would I trust Blumhouse with it? No, I would not. No, I would not. Uh, Richie, Captain America versus Predator. Again, Predator. Can't fuck with the Predator, man. You cannot fuck with the Predator. Uh, righty. Now, let's see. Looks like I've gotten a few more since then. Uh, Imagination Station. What are your thoughts on the Godfather Part 2? Go a little in depth and have you seen Fantasia? I saw Fantasia when I was really little, so I remember nothing about it. Um, and I don't remember a ton about Godfather part two, because I've only seen the trilogy once. So I'll go as in depth as I can, which is not very far. I think Godfather one and Godfather part two are very good movies that I don't necessarily have the desire to watch again. Um, there are movies that I would say I respect more than I actually enjoyed. Although I will say I did prefer Godfather part two to part one ever so slightly. Um, I remember certain things about Robert De Niro young. Cor young um don corleone killing a couple of people i know he like shot somebody and used a towel as a silencer and it caught the towel on fire i remember seeing that of course fredo everybody knows that you know you broke my heart i knew it was you all of that was great um seeing how uh, that movie's about the that series is about the descent of michael corleone so you get the first film where you know he's uh, it ends a certain way where he's now in this crime family that he never wanted to be a part of. And the second film ends in a similar way where he's just descended even further. And now he's murdering his own family members. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're very good movies. I need to watch them again, but I just, again, I've, they're the types of movies that I don't necessarily ever really feel like I'm in the mood to watch like good fellas. I could watch all the time. That's more my type of mod movie, a little bit more exciting, a little bit more, um, a little more pop. The other two, uh, the Godfather movies, a little bit more like prestige, I guess. 
Lucas Griffin, I watched The Ritual last night and loved it. Any thoughts? Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, that was one of the last movies that I watched the year that it came out. Uh, typically, when I get to December in the holiday season, uh, I, I watch a lot of movies that I've missed throughout the years to kind of round out my list of movies to rank or, or catch maybe a couple of hidden gems that I didn't realize or some worst of the year. And uh, the year that I watched... Um, the ritual i was like damn that was really good uh creepy effective uh and the the monster design the creature design by the end was actually really unique so yeah that's a good one if you guys haven't seen the ritual lee b films i'm seeing rob zombie live and did you know he almost directed punisher 2 with thomas jane well, that would have been weird no i've never heard of that i would have killed to seen punisher 2 with thomas jane i love that first movie with him that's to me a very underappreciated movie um but you'll enjoy seeing rob zombie live he's one of the best to put on a good a really good show like he, he he doesn't have the best vocal quality live but you don't even care because his show is so cool uh i've seen him twice now and yeah he's up there with alice cooper where the the stage show and the performance and the energy is just like second to none thoughts on universal monsters universe by del toro like guillermo del toro heading it up or directing all of them uh, I don't know. I, I like the idea of them all having their own different flavor. So he could be maybe like a, a overseeing it, like a Kevin Feige or something like that, maybe. But uh, I really like to see uh, something like that with different characters and a different different filmmaker putting their voice on it because they're all so different. Max, again, have you ever heard this movie called verotica it was released in 2019 or 2020 if not i'd like to hear your thoughts and do a review on it i've never heard of it i was reading it and i was thinking you were saying gothica at first but no i've, I've never heard of verotica jojo mullins love from ireland pal when are we gonna hook up with sean clark when are you gonna hook up with sean clark adam woo grim life and become a horror con guy um I don't know. I've actually never been to a horror con. I've only been to two cons, period. And it's the two mega cons that I spoke at. Um, I'm curious to check out a horror con. I The difficulty, my, my worry is that it would become more about me than everybody that I'm there to see. Uh, because I know how it is like when we go to mega con and I'm there with Sean and there is a hundred plus people, 200 plus people that are there to see Sean. And it's like, you can't walk five inches without somebody else. Jumping, oh my God, Sean, like, can I talk to you for 18 minutes about Captain America? And, uh, you know, God bless him. I'm not trying to make fun of fans, but just that, that's, that was me when I was trying to work my way over to Chris Sarandon to get an autograph. And it took us like 45 minutes. Cause every two steps, somebody would stop Sean. And I was like, God damn it, Sean, fucking wear a hat, motherfucker. <laughs> we gotta go. Uh, but, uh, I, I feel like it would be more along those lines if I went to a horror con, because that's my audience, obviously. So as much as I would love to see people, I would uh, I would want to go with family or somebody and I would feel like it would probably get annoying for them. Me being stopped so much because they're just kind of the, the third wheel in that conversation. Uh, so I, I worry about that a little bit and I even more so than that. That's this much of a worry. The other side of it is. I'm. Petrified to have one of those don't meet your idol moments or, or you know, don't meet your heroes. Everybody has, that goes to cons heavily at least has one or two stories of somebody that they absolutely adore. That they've completely destroyed all the love that they have for them by meeting them in real life. And man, am I petrified to have that happen because I just don't want it to. <laughs> I want to continue to believe that all these people are awesome. <laughs> and that they would they would not be an asshole or they would not say something that 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 taints all the fandom that i had for them i mean shit i had enough of an issue with with um devin sawa running his mouth as much as i love that guy and that's a that's this compared to like somebody like robert Anglin, who i'm sure is awesome everybody says he's incredible so i doubt he would be the one but just i have a fear of that you know walking up and meeting brad dora for somebody like you're that motherfucker that didn't like see to chucky eat a dick get off my table or you know something like that i just oh no <laughs> please love me so yeah i i um i i want to check out a horror con 
the one that's probably going to get me there quickest is I know that there's one there's spooky empire in Orlando, but there's complications with that for a number of reasons. Um, but then you have one in Atlanta that uh, I think it's day of the dead or some shit like that. I, I'm kind of keep my ear to the ground and hopefully next year we'll go to my first horror con. And I absolutely want to go to one where the terrifier crew are there uh, because I have in my mind, I have a really good relationship with those guys. So it'd be very cool to actually like meet them and, and actually talk like, um, you know, Lauren Lavera, who guessed it on the channel. It seems like just an absolute sweetheart. I would love to meet her. Uh, you have uh, Damien, who directed the movies, who I, I don't know if he would recognize me or not. I feel like he would. but Maybe that's just my own vanity uh, that, you know, I, I met him very briefly at Fantastic Fest, just told him I enjoyed the movie and moved out of his way because I knew a lot of other people that wanted to talk to him. Uh, but then he he watched two of my videos, both the Terrifier review, Terrifier 2 review and my ranking of Fantastic Fest movies and commented very, very positively on those. Granted, his movie being reviewed very well by me, I'm sure helped with that. Uh, and even David Howard Thornton did the same thing on the same videos that Damien commented on. He commented on them. So I, I would I would it would be cool experience for me to walk up and then be like, hey, it's Cody or like just to recognize me. I don't know. That would be neat. But I would like to do that. I'd love to meet Robert Anglin, although I'm sure his line is like two days long. Brad Dorif, of course, would be right up there with Robert Anglin. Uh, you got people like Lance Henriksen or any of these people that I grew up watching that I would love to meet. And, you know, a, a horror con would probably put me in the fucking poorhouse <laughs> because like I have a hard enough time managing my money at a regular con when I'm like, it's Vince D'Onofrio, Anthony Michael Hall, Henry Winkler. We got to see all of them, Sean. And uh, at a horror con, it would be like every fucking table pretty much would be somebody that I'd probably want to meet and get an autograph and a picture with. It's a long answer. Sorry. Imagination Station returns. I have an idea. In 1910s Paris, a young boy and a girl become friends. In 1940, the girl is now a vampire and the boy is now invisible. They must work together to survive World War II, Paris, and fall in love. Hmm. You see these off-the-wall wacky ideas sometimes turn into the best stories because they're different. Jesse Marie, hey Cody, love your channel. I found that when you posted your top 10 videos you watch around Halloween, has the list changed since it's been five to six years? Uh, I'm sure it's changed a little bit, but for the most part, the, the mainstays are still there. You've already answered this, but are you a fan of the Goosebumps TV show and do you have any favorite episodes? Uh, yeah, as a kid, I loved the Goosebumps um, TV series. Even more so, I was an Are You Afraid of the Dark kid. That was always my preference of the two. Uh, but Strictly Goosebumps, my favorite episodes was The Two Haunted Masks. Uh, there's, one, there's part one, there's part two. There is um, Stay Out of the Basement or Don't Look in the Basement, one of those where the, the dad is like a plant monster. That one's pretty cool. Werewolf and Fever Swamp. Um, all the Night of the Living Dummies. Uh, what else? There was one that was on the VHS tape or the DVD, whatever one I had this on, that was with Night of the Living Dummy 3, where it was uh, these two kids, they go to stay with like their aunts or something like that, and they keep feeding them this food that makes like the, the grandmas or the aunts get younger while the kids get older. I don't remember the name of it, but that one was pretty cool. Um, let's see. Remember, welcome to was it? Welcome to Horrorland. Like the theme park one was pretty neat. Uh, there's the Tower. There's a medieval one. It's like, is it Tower of Terror? Welcome to Terror Tower. That sounds more like it. Welcome to Terror Tower. Those are the ones that are coming to my mind. Uh, la, 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 la. Eric, did you know D. Snyder did a horror movie? Yes, it was called Strange Land. Uh, and I've seen most of it. My dad rented it back in the day because he was always a big D. Snyder fan. And what piqued my interest was it said, starring Robert England. And I was like, hell yeah! Didn't matter if he had a little tiny fucking role or not. Brady's going to get me there. <coughs> I haven't seen it in years, though, to know if it was ever actually any good. My favorite review of yours is Sleepaway Camp 4, and the actor who played Alan quit acting after that movie. Well... 
I mean, <laughs> I don't really feel bad for him. <laughs> I was trying to think of a way to like be respectful about it, but that role was so fucking bad. It's just like, dude, your agent fucked you on that one. Hey, do you want to play a horribly disgusting, no hygiene, obese, grating on the nerves character for an entire movie? Sure. Career over. <laughs> like that's that guy was a miserable character. Absolutely miserable. Oh, Jesus. All right, let's see here. Rolling Coasters 23. Should 3D movies make a comeback? No. Only if they're going to do what Avatar did and actually make the movie for 3D or a couple of examples of something like Jaws 3D where we're going to do it for the experimental state of a classic movie that we're actually going to redesign from the ground up to look like 3D. But that whole trend that we were in after Avatar where every fucking movie that came out also had this post-converted 3D screening, fuck that shit. I never saw any of those movies except for Wrath of the Titans. And that might have been one of the worst examples, but the through line opinion in all of them was this looks like dog shit. This is just another stupid, cheap ass way to get a couple more dollars per ticket out of us with no effort whatsoever put in for the actual 3D. So, no, I would despise if we go back to that trend where every movie comes out, there's a 3D screen that is just paying extra to wear glasses. let's see here richie wolverine versus predator and they are doing a comic book storyline about it uh i would well yeah wolverine's got the healing ability wolverine might fuck him up yeah i might take wolverine on that one Uh, S hero M oh superhero Mount Rushmore even if you're not a fan of them my superhero Mount Rushmore so Mount Rushmore to me it's the same with my 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 tier lists I'm ranking things off of what is my favorite I don't give a fuck what is the general opinion to me that's boring why would we rank things based off of what we think is most popular in the world that's just there's no insight in that so uh my Mount Mush, Mount, Mount Mushmore. Wow, Mount Rushmore of superheroes. So let's see, what is that? Four. Batman, Wolverine, Spider Man. Uh, now it gets tricky. Those have always been my top three. Mm, now it would be Captain America. I'm just trying to think if there's anybody I'm forgetting from my childhood that should be there that is not. I I'm comfortable with that. Batman, Spider-Man, Wolverine, Captain America. Uh, Hey, it's Marnie. Have you ever seen Jennifer's body or Ginger Snaps? And are you ever going to review them? Also, we are we ever going to get a hostile review series? Uh, You might get a hostile review series. Yes. Those are interesting movies to talk about. Um, have you ever seen Jennifer's Body? I have. I don't remember much about it. I remember liking it more than I thought I was going to, but it's not like this mainstay movie for me. I know a lot of people love it. Uh, Ginger Snaps, I was not a fan of. I watched that for the first time back in April, and we did it in that maze, 31 on 31, Vampires versus Werewolves, Creatures of the Night. Didn't make it very, very high for me. I, I was not a fan of Ginger Snaps, unfortunately. Oh, okay. I think I'm all the way caught up in my, yes, I'm caught up. Okay. Now we can do a couple more regulars. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to, we'll go three hours. I'll, I'll go to three hours unless it just dies off, but there's 400 of you watching. So I doubt that there will. My back's holding up well from my little spill. So uh, that was the biggest worry for me. Until I go to stand up and my back's going to be like, fuck you for sitting down for that long. Oh, let's see. Honorable mention. Welcome to dead house. That's another good one. That's another good one. I forgot about that one. Uh, the night and terror tower. Okay. Yeah. That sounded more like it. Tower of terror. just sounded like a, a, a theme park ride. 
I liked Strange Land, Captain Howdy. I mean, it's it's maintained an audience, so it must be worth checking out. It must have been pretty decent. Uh, I read so many of those as a kid. The first I could think of offhand was The Haunted Mask and Piano Lessons Can Be Murder. Does anybody remember those books? There was a book series that I used to read a lot as a kid that would always have like some monster and some mundane task mixed together for the the title of the book. Like knights don't serve pizza, uh, ghouls don't scoop ice cream. There was like a whole series of those that I really loved as a kid. I tried to find those. I was going to order them for my my kids. Strange Land was all right. Teen love scene while Jamin and Megadeth was. LOL as it should be. What did you think of Dead Silence? I like that movie. I think it's underrated, honestly. I mean, it's not one of James Cam James Cameron. It's not one of James Wan's best. And that's not an insult because he's done some massive movies. But uh, Dead Silence, most oftentimes I see that in the bottom and they're like, this is the one movie that sucked and that James Wan ever did. And I'm like, I disagree. I think it's actually pretty cool. Eli says, congrats. I've been subscribed since 2018. Well, I appreciate it, man. Uh, Solid Snake Legacy. Are you excited for the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1 coming out in October? Yes. Because I finally get to play the original Metal Gear Solid again. It's been so long. I will absolutely be live streaming that. Uh, and I'm curious of what they're going to do to actually remaster it. I don't know if I can do too much to it, but uh, they got to do something. So I'm going to be curious. But yes, I cannot wait for those. The original Metal Gear Solid is my favorite video game of all time. I absolutely adore Metal Gear Solid 3. Metal Gear Solid 2 is a lot of fun too. I just, I always hated the fact that you didn't get to play as Snake. I am one of those people. I have not let go yet. Sorry, Hideo. Still pissed. Breaking Bad Season 4 or Die Hard? Ooh, you motherfucker. You son of a bitch. Oh, man. I don't know, dude. They're both fucking perfection in my mind. That's like telling me which kid are you going to save? Always been too lazy to look, but what was your first YouTube video? Uh, we actually watched it, and I reacted to it at the very beginning of the stream. It was a sausage party review, believe it or not. I know that has nothing to do with my channel nowadays, but if you dial it back all the way back to the beginning of the stream, uh, you'll see me kind of watching and commentating on my first video. Oh, let's see here. Kane Kong. Hey, Cody, love your channel. You always make my day and are my favorite YouTuber. Well, that's awesome. Thank you. If you gave Halloween Kills from 0 to 10, what would you give it? And do you like the song Psycho Killer? Uh, it's all right. Um, Halloween Kills from 0 to 10. Well, I rate movies on a 5 scale. I just think it's more simple that way. Uh, I mean, obviously, we can do math and I can tell you what it is out of 10. But it's a 2 out of 5 movie to me. So I guess that would be 4 out of 10. The, the weird thing about the five scale versus the 10 scale is it always looks so much worse on the 10 scale to me, which is why I don't really like it. Like if I tell you this is a three out of five movie, it might, might not be like a movie that excites you to go out. It's like, well, that's not exactly a ringing endorsement, Cody. Well, sure. But I'm still telling you this is a, a good movie. It's, they get more wrong, right than they get wrong. Three out of five. That's pretty good. You transfer that over six out of 10 sounds like it's shit. It just doesn't feel the same. And the same with the lower numbers. When I say two out of five, it's like, okay, you clearly didn't like it, but it's not like you're saying it's fucking trash. But then you go over to four out of 10. Four out of 10 sounds horrible. <laughs> like Maybe that's just me, but the five system just seems more simple where the 10 just, unless it's eight, nine, or 10, it looks bad to me on the 10 scale. Uh, Goosebumps and Tales from the Crypt were childhood staples. Yeah, I never watched any Tales from the Crypt, oddly enough. I, I know that's weird because I was right there in that era. But yeah, for me, it was Are You Afraid of the Dark and Goosebumps. Adam asks, did you see my tweet that I tagged in on X? It is called Twitter, sir. I refuse to conform. About the sci-fi horror game Fort Solace. I did see your tweet. I don't know much about the game, though. Uh, so we'll see. If I hear a lot about it or if I see a trailer for it, maybe I'll check it out. Super chat from Chris. Hey, Cody, hope all is well. Will you be playing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game? And when will we get a John Hughes ranking video? Ooh, that would be a nice ranking video. I don't know. I don't know. That would be something that it would just be like when nothing else is going on and I'm in the mood to watch John Hughes movies. But that would be fun. I would enjoy doing that. So that is an idea that I like. Uh, but I have been playing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game for most of the last week, especially since I was sick. 
Um, I have one live stream on the Game Chamber channel where me and CP play for like two hours. That's uh, It was a lot of fun. And I've played, I think I got the trophy, or excuse me, the achievement last night for playing 75 matches. So I'm somewhere around 80 matches, which doesn't sound, it's not as massive as it sounds because some matches are only a few minutes long. But yeah, I'm, I've been playing the shit out of it. Oh, Imagination Station returns fast. Th fast thing. Dry in the lips. Num, num, num. Last thing for the night. Freddy's dead. Jeepers Creepers. Oh, another one of these fucking. Do you want to eat shit or vomit? Which one, bro? Last night for the thing. Freddy's dead. Uh, Jeepers Creepers 4. Seed of Chucky. I'll always know what you did last summer. Rank these shit bombs. Wow. I mean, mm, Seed of Chucky is coming out on top in that ranking. Then I would put Jeepers Creepers 4. Then I'll always know what you did last summer, and then Freddy's dead. Why does Hatchet get no love? I've reviewed all four of the movies. Three of them I did not like. <laughs> so that's the reason why I don't talk about it very much, because to me it's not really worth talking about. But I have talked about the franchise. Those reviews must be hidden, because not many people know about them, because I get questioned about Hatched a lot. Like, why haven't you done this? I have. All four of them. Uh, I like the first movie enough, but that's a movie that I had to watch like three times to really appreciate what it was going for. I don't love it, but I like it enough. Two, I hated. Three had a lot of promise. And to me, it fumbled almost all of it. Like the fact that you had Derek Mears and Kane Hodder get into a fight and the fight is like this infuriated me. I was like, how the fuck do you not have the self-awareness to not make this the most epic scene of this franchise? And I thought four was absolute garbage. The one that everybody was excited about, the Victor Crowley returns. It was just like, no, this is bad. When nothing but love and respect to Brian Quinn, but when one of the impractical jokers is the best actor you have on set, you fucked up. <laughs> have you ever played Heavy Rain? I have. I loved that game back in the day when it came out. I haven't replayed it. Uh, at the time, I was trying to get the trophy for seeing all the endings, but I lost patience with it because one little wrong move and you fuck up. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was a great story. A lot of people didn't like the ending reveal. I thought the end reveal was was brilliant. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed that one. Jojo Mullins, Ireland again. I was more wondering, do you ever see yourself becoming a Comic-Con star? You're definitely do a table. Um, I don't know. I don't really know how you go about that. Um, I know I might come across as arrogant, but if you tell me I deserve to be sitting next to a lot of these celebrities, I'd be like, I, what are you talking about? No, no, don't set me next to Kane Hodder. That's ridiculous. So uh, I, I don't know. Maybe I just, I don't give myself enough credit, um, but I don't even know how you would go about that. Like, does the con reach out to you or do you have to, what I have to go reach out to cons be like, this is who I am. Can I get a spot? Uh, I just don't know how that works, nor is that something that's necessarily on my priority list. Uh, at the moment i would enjoy going to the con and interacting with people that way but sitting down uh like i did at MegaCon and and just getting waves of people and and talking and everything like that I, I don't know if that's something that i would want to do more than once a year it's pr it's very exhausting i love meeting everybody and it's actually really refreshing to meet all of the actual normal people and and gets a nice palate cleanser from some of the bullshit that happens in the comment section so it's very refreshing in that regard and everybody's very sweet and nice and um you know, even some of them I remembered from meeting the first Megacon that came back the second Megacon, which is really cool, but that it's a very draining process for me as somebody who's typically more introverted. Uh, I, I get my social battery is not very big, so that depletes it and it just sits there and blinks on red. So uh, going to a con specifically to do that the entire time, I don't know if I'm for that or not. <clears throat> but we'll see. Never say never. Lee B Films, would you rather watch Rob Zombie's Crow or Michael Mann's James Dean biopic? 
I'm guessing these are movies that would have happened at one point, but they never did. Um, in that list, I would rather see Rob Zombie's Crow. James Dean, while I understand, is an iconic actor. I, I've never seen any of his stuff, so I personally don't have any interest in James Dean. Um, yeah, Rob Zombie's Crow, while that doesn't necessarily scream a great movie to me, I'd be more curious what that is. Oh... Uh, Respect, you going live this long is a real treat for all your subs. Respect. Yeah, it um it uh ooh, sorry. My back just started the tweet there for a second. Um time flies when I do these very often. So it doesn't feel like I've been sitting here for two hours and forty five minutes, but I'll be damned it's been long. Uh ever bump into Pizawal at cons? Are you two friends? Well, I haven't been to any horror cons yet. I've only been to the two mega cons. So no, I have not bumped into uh Pizawal. I have interacted with him a couple of times. Seems like a really good dude. I've seen a few of his videos. Um, I'm sure he would be a joy to, to run into. He seems like somebody I'd get along with. Cody Leach, rank your top five favorite video games that you've played of 2023 so far. I don't even think I have five video games that I've played so far this year. Uh, number one, without a doubt, is Resident Evil 4. That's like... the, the Unless Spider-Man 2 is fucking mind-blowingly good, that's going to be my number one of the year, no matter what. Um, so there's a super chat that I missed. Okay, well, let me... While I'm talking, let me refresh the, the chat thing. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> uh, you have Resident Evil 4 is number one. Number two would be Zelda. Number three right now might be Texas Chainsaw. What the fuck else came out? I'm blanking on if anything else even came out that I was really all that that crazy for. Uh, okay, let me see. Did I miss a super chat? Um, was that Adrian? Yeah, I haven't seen that one. Adrian, enjoyed your The Walking Dead season ranking. Do you feel it paid off going back and watching for the review? Also, thoughts on John Bernthal playing Freddy. He has charisma. Uh, I love John Bernthal, but I don't like that idea at all. To me, his performance, his um personality his on-screen look doesn't say freddy to me in the slightest um yeah i'm not a fan of that one did it pay off going back and watching for the review i mean it paid off that i can actually be part of the conversation that's always relieving where you know people talk about the walking dead and i can't be like oh no i stopped at season eight i don't know what happened um so i like the fact that i can have an educated opinion and i can be part of the conversation when we're talking about the walking dead but uh it didn't pay off as far as like i enjoyed my time going back and watching the last four seasons i thought season nine was good for most of it but the season eight was as bad if not worse than season seven season 10 had moments that i liked and season 11 had ideas that i liked but and just that show that show is the epitome of just milking the fuck out of something to the point where the show technically ended and they're still squeezing that tit you got walking dead dead city that i've heard good things about but i've heard good things about it from people that would say nothing but good things about walking dead you have the rick and michonne thing coming you've got daryl doing his show and it's just like guys fucking enough like if you're a fan and you love it good eat it all up have 12 more seasons but just god damn as somebody that's been there from the beginning it's like can you fucking stop oh, sorry mouth's getting dry lips are getting a little chapped all right i think i've caught up on super chats now um mason says i sent you my poster for frogman on twitter okay I'll check it out whenever we're done here. Oh, uh, let's see. What villains do you want to see in the Batman 2? Um, I will I really want to see them do some villains that we haven't seen or we haven't seen in a very long time. Like Hush was very directly teased um subtly in the original The Batman. I'd love to see that one. You have people like Victor Saz and Calendar Man that would be interesting. 
if you want to go a little bit more crazy, I would be curious to see if anybody could pull off a grounded version of Mr. Freeze and villains like that. But uh, they've already talked. I think they said Clayface. They've already confirmed that would be that's interesting to see what they're going to do with that. Oh, let's see. You haven't seen all the James Bond films, but still called No Time to Die the best yes sphincter. I'm assuming you're just kind of jabbing me and not trolling with the sphincter thing, and I'll just roll with that. But uh, I'm fairly certain I said it's possibly the best of the Daniel Craig movies. I don't see myself saying it's the best James Bond movie if I haven't seen more than two-thirds of them. So I am going to err on the side of caution and say that you probably are misquoting me because that never happens. Uh, let me see here. Your voice is respectable and easy to listen to. Well, that's good. Welcome to Midnight with Cody. Going to get you through the night with some commentary and slow jazz. The microphone certainly helps. Uh, Dead Space remake. Okay, yep, I stand corrected. So that would be my number two. Zelda would be number three. And then um, Texas Chainsaw at number four. And then Jedi Survivor, I didn't really care for that one. I didn't even finish it. Didn't even finish it. Made the game bigger and forgot to fill it out with shit. It just felt so fucking empty. What is your favorite band? I don't really have a favorite. I have a collection of bands that I love, but there's never been a band where I'm just like, that's the one. That's the band that has never done me wrong. For a long time, I would have said Stone Sour, but I didn't really like their um, their last album. And then they've been on hiatus ever since, which is frustrating. So they've I've kind of I've lost a little bit of love for that band. Uh, other bands that would be in there would be like Metallica, Alter Bridge, Tremonti, Stained, Godsmack, although I didn't really care for their last album either. Um, Judas Priest. Um, we'll stop there. I can just keep going and going and going. But yeah, I don't have like a favorite. Uh, hey, Cody, in your opinion, please tell us what could make Texas Chainsaw a better film. Original, of course. It's not. It, it's not that simple it's not like there's something wrong with the movie that i have an issue with it's just the movie executes what it's trying to do masterfully it's trying the things that it's trying to elicit in the viewer the things that it is trying to bring to the experience it does it masterfully but it's a movie that i saw for the first time when i was 13 years old in 2003 i believe is when the is that when the remake came? yeah that's when the, the remake came out i saw the remake and then i was like holy shit i gotta see the original and i bought it from best buy came home and watched it and i was like oh this is different uh it's just it's just not an enjoyable movie to watch that's just my thing with it i don't necessarily have any significant things that are wrong with it aside from franklin being incredibly annoying and i feel like the performance of sally hardesty while perfect for what they're trying to go for gets a little grating in the third act when she's just screaming and wailing for 30 minutes straight. And that just kind of ties into the overall thing of just, it's not enjoyable to watch. In my opinion, it's not a movie I'm ever in the mood to watch. It's not something I throw on for enjoyment or for entertainment. It's just, it's not that type of experience. It's there to disturb you and give you this grind housey feel and make you want to take a shower afterwards. And those types of movies don't have very much rewatch value for me. So there's not really anything that I would say would make it a better film aside from maybe getting rid of Franklin, but it's just not, it's not a movie that I would ever call one of my favorites. Rewatchability plays very high in me calling a movie, one of my favorites. And that has little to none for me. <clears throat> found your channel when you covered dexter new blood hope your stream is going well been a while since that came out do you still feel the same about yes i do yes i do i have not rewatched it i don't know if i'll ever rewatch it because i just don't feel like having that experience again look that was a show that i loved the first episode and there was moments throughout the series where i was like oh this is the flavor of the old dexter that i love but that was a show that spent nine episodes for the most part spinning its wheels and I remember talking with CP after we watched the episode almost every single week and him even more so than me. He's like, dude, I'm a little worried. Like there's not much like 
going on. Like they're not really like moving shit forward yet. They're just kind of spinning their wheels and, and dicking around. And um, I agreed to a point, but I was trying to like put the plugs in the ears. Like la la la, it's gonna be great. And then you get to that finale and just no, go fuck yourself. I hated the way that they ended that show. And it just it's insulting to me as a fan. It's infuriating to even think that they did that a second time and ar arguably worse. I prefer the ending of season eight to that. And so, yeah, I haven't changed my thoughts on it one iota. And the fact that they're just they're trying their best to think of other ways to milk the Dexter name for more money because they're like, oh, fuck, that was the most streamed thing we've ever done. And we killed the fucking guy at the end of it. Oh, Jesus, what do we do? It's just hilarious to me. Oh, let's see. Favorite Justin Long movie is Jeepers Creepers for sure. Love him in Jeepers Creepers. Jared Pearden, Cody, absolutely love your channel. Curious to know how familiar you are with the Star Wars animated shows. Not familiar whatsoever. Uh, which live action show has been your favorite? Um, Mandalorian season one, but I haven't watched season two or three because I didn't hear very good things about them. Uh, I didn't like Obi-Wan. I have not watched. Uh, what's the other show that everybody's raving about? Um, fuck uh i feel like it starts with an a came out last year i don't know whatever the most recent star wars show is that everybody was talking about very highly i didn't watch that one either i'm just kind of done with disney plus i think their shit sucks and they have disney has all but destroyed star wars for me i was never like a crazy star wars fan but i was a pretty heavy casual fan i loved Force Awakens and I did not like Last Jedi and while I tried to convince myself in the theater that um, Rise of Skywalker wasn't so bad as time has gone on the more I think about it, the more I dislike that the fact that they have had no plan had no plan for that trilogy have had no plan since and every idea they've come out with has either not happened or sounds ridiculous the fact that they got a movie coming out with Daisy Ridley while I don't fault her and I think she was done dirty by the trilogy as well as the other stars. And I wish well for her. The fact they're doing a Ray movie is moronic to me. And their shows, you know, Mandalorian season one had a lot of promise from what I've heard. Can't say that I would agree until I watch them. But from what I've heard, season two and especially season three, serious downgrade. Boba Fett apparently was terrible. I didn't like um the vast majority of Obi-Wan to me, that was just a gigantic swing and a miss when there was a very easy, awesome version of, of pieces of that in there, but supposedly there's somebody that made like a movie cut of it. That's significantly better. Uh, so all that put together, it's just like you fucking destroyed star Wars. I have no faith in anything that you do with star Wars and I don't have any interest in watching it. I will watch the original trilogy. And when I'm in a really fucked up mood, I might watch revenge of the Sith and uh, force awakens. But beyond that, I don't care anymore. So they've lost all my interest for me especially on the Disney plus side. And they've done pretty close to that as well with the Marvel stuff. <clears throat> Gran Turismo review, Cody. I reviewed it two weeks ago. So yeah, it's already out. Go check it out. Michael entity. Hey, Cody, big fan of your work. What's one horror film that doesn't age, but that well, but you think would work really well as a remake. Mine is basket case. Um, trick or treat. Trick or treat. And I don't necessarily think they need to make a remake. I think they could do a reboot where it's like a, a sequel, like a 40, 50 years later sequel. And just to where it's kind of going over the same thing where a new now that for those that don't know what trick or treat is, trick or treat is a movie from 1986. I believe it's a metal horror film to where you have this kid who's kind of like the outcast in high school. He loves heavy metal. He idolizes this guy named Sammy Kerr, who's kind of like the Ozzy Osbourne of that world. And the Sammy Kerr dies in a hotel fire and he gets a hold of like a work print version of his last album that he has that he never got to release before he died. And while he plays this record, if he plays it backwards, he can actually talk to Sammy Kerr from beyond the grave and he starts helping them get revenge on his bullies and shit like that. And then eventually it starts to turn sinister and Sammy Kerr is trying to find a way to get get out, get back. It's a very cool movie, a little dated over your head if you're not a metal fan, but it's pretty fucking awesome. I love it. I think there's a way that you could do a modern sequel to it with especially the resurgence that vinyls have had over the last five to ten years 
where a modern high school student that is yet again the heavy metal kid that is the outcast that has not changed, <laughs> although there's just more of them, that has not changed. And you can have him find in an old record store that album, that old work print version of the last Sammy Kerr album, and he starts fucking around with it, and Sammy Kerr is trying to come out into a modern age. I think that would be very fucking cool. You could have uh, somebody that loves the original, write it, that has the the flair for the old, the, the old school 80s style, but also a way to modernize it. And then you could do something to where the soundtrack is almost just as good as the movie. And it's my favorite movie soundtrack of all time by Fastway. It's basically just an album of theirs where it's the whole albums throughout the, the movie. Get somebody like Corey Taylor, who loves the original Trick or Treat, to come and re-record a couple of those tracks for the soundtrack. That would be fucking awesome. Like, I would lose my shit. I, if I was signing checks, I would be making that happen. Oh, Lord. Let's see here. Jax Teller or Rick Grimes? Jax Teller. Much better character, in my opinion. Uh, let's see here. Jason, okay. Uh, unless I get another super chat while I'm doing this, um, I will probably end with this one because I've been on here for three hours. My lips are starting to chat. They're so fucking dry. Did you have any cool teachers as a kid who inspired you in any way? I had several in elementary school who encouraged me to keep writing horror and make a short horror film. Uh, I have a couple of teachers that to this day I still remember as being my favorite teachers. So uh, you had just just an awesome teacher. That I had that just made learning fun, which was a very rare thing for me. I, I didn't hate school, but there were very few teachers I had that actually made learning fun. Uh, was this guy named Mr. Daly? If anybody went to Whitmer High School or Jefferson High uh, Junior High or Washington Junior High in Toledo, Ohio, you probably had him as a teacher at some point. And he was my science teacher in seventh grade. And that guy, by far, throughout the entire school. Um, my entire school career was the most fun teacher I ever had, where he always had these fun stories and jokes and ways to relate the material to you and keep you engaged with keeping you laughing and, and happy. Um, uh, I absolutely loved that guy's class. Uh, another teacher that always stuck with me is uh, one of my high school teachers. I had him, I think, two years in a row, my junior year and my senior year for chemistry and AP chemistry, and it was um, Dr. Chennault. And what I always loved about Dr. Chennault was that he was the only teacher I had in high school that talked to us like we were adults. Now, I'm of the opinion to a certain degree that some kids don't deserve to be treated like adults because they still act like little fuckheads, but I always, at the time especially, I despised the fact that so many teachers treated us like we were little kids and they would like get touchy about certain subjects and they didn't want to talk about the real world and you know high school the way that the school system is set up is an absolute shit system at least in america i can't speak for anywhere else it is a shit system at preparing kids for the real world they teach you so much bullshit that you never need and never use and there's so many things that is so integral to everyday life when you go into adulthood that they don't bother to even touch on. Like the fact that you have kids that are well into their 20s that still don't know how to file their own fucking taxes is, is something that is just crazy, that there's no educational thing in, 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 in the system for stuff like that that is integral to adulthood, that you have to have somebody teach you. You don't just learn it. Mini rant over. But I had so many teachers that even though I was 18 years old and I'm about to go out into the world and I'm already in the workforce and I'm going to be going off to college and all this stuff that I am an adult as much as an adult can be at 18 years old. And majority of teachers would just treat you like you were just this 13, 14 year old little kid. Like we can't say boobs around them. We can't talk about the terrorism stuff that's happening. We can't talk about this any of the shootings that happen because we need to talk about numbers and shapes and colors. And what I always loved about Chanel was that he never shielded the real world from us. If there was something relevant to talk about and it was ugly, 
he was going to fucking talk about it. And he was going to talk about it as ugly as it was. And he would always prepared you with stories about college, about how things really are. And he always told us how it was. And he wasn't afraid to say stuff that maybe he shouldn't say as a teacher per the bylaws or whatever the fuck they have to follow. But I always respected that. I always respected the fact that I felt like he was a teacher that I could talk to on some even plane or he could talk to us on some even plane. And I didn't feel like I was being talked down to. Um, and he was just a great teacher in general. Like AP chemistry was a motherfucker and I got an A because he was just a great teacher and because I was a badass student. But nonetheless, <laughs> that was the, those are the two teachers that I think of. There's other teachers that I love because they were nice and I have a lot of good memories with them and stuff like that. But those are the two just as far as having an impact on me that um, I uh, I remember a lot. So, yep. Oh, all right. Let's see here. Did I Was there any... Any more super chats or anything like that? No? Okay. All right, guys. <laughs> Three hours and five minutes later. First of all, thank you guys for seven years on YouTube. I'm um, looking forward to seven and a hell of a lot more further. Um, thank you guys, especially those of you that may, however many of you have been there since the beginning and all of you that continue to discover my channel for through various ways. Um, I appreciate you guys being here and commenting and being the reason why I do all this is interacting with all of you guys and entertaining all of you. And when I hear stories about how it's, uh, it's, uh, just now joined and it's ending. Where the fuck have you been? I've been on here for three hours. Uh, but hearing, you know, I get you through work or through hard times and stuff. That stuff always is really nice to hear. So I appreciate that very much. Murphy, the cat super chat. Hey, Cody, congrats. Have you seen adaptation with Nick cage? I have not, sir. I have not. I apologize. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, I just thank you guys. I appreciate it. It's been a, a crazy seven years, but uh, I feel like I keep getting better and the, the YouTube space keeps getting a little crazier. So um, full steam ahead as far as things to expect from me. Um, luckily, I'm starting to feel better now. So I do by the end of August, you will have for sure a big trouble in Little China review time to just finally get back onto this John Carpenter review series. I feel like it's fucking cursed because the day that I was going to do it is when I got sick. Uh, and then we have, um, my Patreon pick. So all every single month and I've, I've fell off during the summer for sure. Um, but every single month under normal circumstances, I have my patrons vote on an idea for a video per month. And this month, uh, kind of in response, I would assume to the horror icon tier list, they have voted for me to do a final girl tier list. So you will have that this weekend with a factor sponsorship. And uh, that should be a fun video. So uh, that would be uh, talking about things like Laurie Strode, Sydney Prescott, and Nancy, and all of them, and ranking them on a tier list. And I will be abundantly clear this time about the top tier being just my favorites for all the fucking semantics police out there. That's not iconic. That's your favorite. Uh, so you have that to look forward to. And uh, I don't know when it's going to happen. My goal was to get it done by the last week of August, but with me being out you know, out of commission for a week. And, um, the fact that I have to have somebody else help me put this together so that I'm not, um, creating questions for myself. Uh, I have an idea that I wanted to do to revisit the cold plunge idea for something more fun where I'm going to call it like trivia plunge or something like that. Still working on the name that, that has a ring to it, but, uh, where I'm going to have the cold plunge outside. I'm going to fill it with water out of the hose. So it'll be like in the seventies or something like that. I'm going to get into it and my, I'm going to have 50 questions, 10 rounds uh, or five rounds of 10 questions each. And for every question that I get wrong, horror questions, horror trivia questions, every question that I get wrong, my kids get to dump a bucket of ice in. So it gets colder as I fuck up. I think that would be fun. Uh, and it's either going to be really impressive and I'm going to be sitting there in a nice brisk 70 degree water for the entire time, or I'm going to get humbled like a motherfucker and I'm going to get hypothermia while embarrassing myself at not knowing so many horror things. So that's an idea that I have that'll be coming out at some point. But um, yeah, those are the things to look out for, guys. I appreciate it. And uh, also, everybody, uh, go ahead and if you're going to show up to Fantastic Fest in September, sound off and let me know somewhere so I know who to look forward to, to meeting and, and hanging out with. Because provided I don't get deathly ill again, knock on wood. Uh, in September, I will be back in Austin, Texas with Uncle Sean and CP is going to be joining us this year. 
provided nothing happens to, to mess up those plans. So all three of us will be there. Three quarters of all top stream checking out fantastic fest. <sighs> so many words. All right, guys, thank you so much, especially for all the questions, all of the, um, the super chats, especially you guys are always extremely generous with that. And I appreciate it. It, it helps out more than you realize. So with all that being said, guys, thank you so much. Happy seven years. Happy Thursday and have a good one.